Okay. Okay, so we're playing Cypher on Icebox. But like, what kind of spicy chicken is the question? Do you, do you get the like audio as well? Mm -hmm. okay, like um, hold on. Yep. I'll just turn it up. Yeah, good. Oh yeah. my god. Mwah. I love breasts in general. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. Okay. Me too. <laughs> Can I look at your sage? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> What size? What size? Oh, this goes here. Pancake size. Go oh. team, go. Some interesting tricks. Hey, they're steamrolling us. Reloading. Multiple enemies reloading. No, oh, like the one way. Reloading. Enemy I'm giving you a trip. One pipe. Cage trigger. One belt. Probably be careful about Holding using weapons in too far. I'm giving you a trip, one pipe. Uh, using what too far? The, the right classic click. right click? Yeah. yeah. So the right click here Which in the sky makes perfect sense. The only thing is that the uh, right not the jet. Yeah, not the jet, mm -hmm. she's too far away. 100%. One belt. I'm holding maze. Holding maze. maze. Ooh, love the one way. Kind of, not really one way. <laughs> Pushing with the omen. I got your left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I kind of wanted just wanted to delete the. <laughs> what the fuck was that right click? Yeah, there's a little um, too many right clicks, but. Okay. I was just like really uh hyper aware of the the pipes uh possibly like pushing. So you mean like uh? Because I I saw like the omen trying to push towards belt. Um, so I like threw that cage on pipes just to like delete that angle for him, but I don't think it was like the best. Uh, okay. Cage. Last one. I'm holding me. Yeah, okay. like after after this. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Pushing with the omen. I got your love. Yeah. Either way, I think it's not a big deal. I really like that you time your your aggression here. So you see omen going in. You go in with him. Mm -hmm. Love it. You see him to smoke. You also need to smoke. Got your love. Yeah. You see him. But I think in this case, I probably should have swung like right side, right? Just to like cover his back. Mm, could be like fifty fifty. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, somebody was was definitely on the on the right side in the beginning. Mm, that's true. Yeah, I could go either way because like he leaves the smoke, but he has, he's also directly in a gunfight. So it could be you help him with this fight, or you help him if there's someone right. from directly to your right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a toss, I guess. Yeah, gotcha. it's a 50 50. The most important thing is that you you went out with him. As opposed to like waiting for him to like die. <laughs> I told him I got his left, and then he swung. He swung left. I expected him to swing uh, right yeah. side. Cause okay. that that smoke, like when you swing from that smoke, he was positioned to swing right side, but he swung left instead. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, I have a sheriff. I'm not actually. Yeah, I agree with that. I get some early info for you guys, so you can quick rotate B. Oh, does this game actually work? It does, but I just kind of fuck it up. <laughs> I think you have to like jump. You have to like jump in to get to that spot. Mm -hmm. To get that spot. Don't see anything, eh? I think they're mid. Yo, mid. Say you should hear them though. If you want to be a little bit greedy, Breaking if you wall. don't see anyone A and and you expect them not to be A because like for example, the previous one they hit A and they, and they failed. And you can actually mm -hmm. just like just grab your orb. Right here. True, 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 true. I think they're mid. I, I keep like mm, devaluing the the value of like cypher ult just because it's easier like to get I guess and harder to like use on a body. Yeah. Um, but you're right about the orb in general. I caged him. Wait, was there was there somebody in, in two? Oh, there is. Okay. Yeah, someone was breaking the wall. I think I should have just like went for maybe like a wall bang, uh, a couple of shots maybe. I think it would have been better to just walk up because like this cage is kind of a, gi a giveaway that oh Saifu is here. That I'm here. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Saifu is here and he knows that I'm inside too. <laughs> so now if I was the enemy, I'll be I'll be Rest thinking, be. really questioning whether I should like leave too, but what I should do. Mhm. Mm I think I should have definitely just eliminated that threat just because I keep checking back and checking back and checking back. 
Uh, now Jet appears on the mini map. I think uh, I would have uh, just stayed mid. Mm -hmm. I would have like either like not really necessarily stand here, but maybe you stand uh, to like to your right, so you have like some cover, and you mm -hmm. watch the cross, or you stand mm -hmm. here. Oh, it's turned there, yeah, and just well, like yeah. let him walk out, yeah. Right. And you wait cool. for him to walk out, cause like either gotcha. he stays there the whole round, or he breaks the wall, or he waits for the wall, or he leaves. And if he leaves, then then you you have like a free angle on him, right? Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah. Another thing I'm thinking too is that besides this person in two, it'd be really great if someone could like hold mid, cause right now no one's really holding mid. Everyone's actually rotating to a B. Mhm. Mm so imagine if, let's see if we face toward me, okay, we don't, Rest kind of, So I can like, kind of hold both from maybe like under tube, unless he completely breaks the wall, then I can rotate like to kitchen or something. Yeah, what I would like to say is probably like you standing here and just watching mid in case like, because mm -hmm. we know that they're B, right? So when multiple people are B, one person is tube, most likely nobody is A, and if that someone is A, you can always check your cam, then I would say... Watching the cross is like really good value because most likely they're gonna rotate yeah. out of B, and then by rotating B you can either get a free pick off or at least come to your team. Hey, they're rotating to A, and your team can immediately rotate to A. Mm -hmm. Rest there, B. Because like what I'm kind of expecting here is like you already have your whole team here. Still it's seen it's really unlikely that the enemy team is gonna so be pushing B at this point. Two. Last one, mm -hmm. uh, I'm coming to you guys. You don't even need this trip, it's like 4v1. Yeah, true, true, true. Good round. Alright, so let's see how a good round goes. That was $200 wasted. Buy our instead. True. Should be boners. These are some really interesting trips. I don't even know if anyone's really gonna go there. <laughs> Spicy chicken guys. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, I saw it in a. And like a immortal scrim or something like that, I think. It's like really specific. Uh, if you if you call them out, that they're gonna take you up all the way up to kind of nest yeah. line ish. Mm -hmm. Most, yeah, I'd love to actually push. have uh, something for zipline, like middle of zipline, but couldn't find any line, like anything. Like if I can put one on top of four ten, I definitely would. Like the most default ish kind of trips. The cipher here the, uh, is, is usually like maze or site. I got your left. Mm -hmm. I got you guys left. No need to peek. No need to peek. Unfortunately, your team peeks anyways. Okay, so we decide to hold close to the spectre. Love it. Oh, one could be four ten. Did we kill that? The problem with these these cages though is that now you don't have an escape. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so I would have just. And used... I'm playing like one and done at this yeah, point. Yeah, you're playing one and done. I would have just used this first cage here and just like kind of walk walk inside of it because this second cage doesn't really accomplish anything that the first cage doesn't already do like you already get you already close instead i would have saved that second cage so you can escape gotcha gotcha i guess i was activating it more because i thought i heard somebody um go go 410 and then i thought hey like i'm just gonna like activate it so 14 can't like aggress on on my teammates or me but you said 410? But yeah, yeah, 410. What, what do you mean by 410? Um, 410 is the, you know, when you take the zip line, the like the thing you can land in the middle, where, oh, where okay. I had the second cage the gotcha. on top. Yeah, okay. that was 410. So I thought I heard somebody there. That's why I activated it. But uh, you're absolutely right that if I was using it for myself, then it, it wouldn't be necessary. Yep. Skewed, I think. Unbalanced. I think if someone got to that spot, it's gonna be like pretty unlikely because they're exposed to like, every single angle. I see what you mean. It says four ten on it. <laughs> mm, how do I play when I don't really have my full setup? I can, I guess, I can aggro a little bit. No, raise chicken, but mm, I need a better cam than. See, now would be a great time to have that trip that you spent a while ago. I hear one here. <laughs> Yeah. One belt. This thing about the cam. I hear one uh, cam. Then they get shot out early. Yeah, yeah, because you're using it too early. What I would, what I would do is that I would wait like five to ten seconds to see if the enemy just like makes noise for me. If they make noise, I don't have to cam because I already got mm. the information that people are here because I hear footsteps. Mm. So I would instead use the cam if I don't hear anything. 
Oh, that's actually really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you don't have, you don't get duplicate value, and I could maybe even save it for save it, when right. they push in deep. Exactly. Yeah. You, you can tag someone like behind them. Uh, so my hit 84. Probably don't want to pick this. Camera taken. Like as soon as I see two people, there's one person belt, one person the like T side nest. Like I'm mm -hmm. already thinking I should I should probably leave this spot. Cause mm -hmm. any angle that I pick from where I'm standing, I'm I'm going to possibly face a one v two, or maybe mm -hmm. more if more people come belt. One up, nest and gotcha. Belt. Uh, so I hit eighty four. And meanwhile, like your one team is, is, is not really there to like help you. Like so in, so in, in that case, uh, how should I try to play? Should I try to just like get out to the left? Should I just stay and hide? Uh, what's like the best course of action if I decided to not engage them or stall for as long as I can? I would just look to play around trips. Well, I guess because you don't have any trips is unfortunate. But like, I feel like I guess I had a cage for to help me get out. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I feel like Cypher is easiest and most defaultish kind of play is just to like hold maze with trips. Mm, and like pick mm. whenever your chips get activated, whenever chips get broken. Do you think the buy here was uh, correct in the first place? Because I got a phantom instead of like getting full util uh, and specter maybe as cipher, which would have been actually pretty useful if I had the trips. It does. Yeah, it depends how you want to play this round. Mm -hmm. Like phantom heavy is like kind of standard, but also because you're foregoing utility, it means that you don't really have the utility to, to stall, so that you have to like take more gunfights. And right. you basically have to win those gunfights. Mm. So an alternative, not saying this is like a better or worse option, just like another option, is that a lot of people, myself included, will actually go Guardian, especially if you're going to play sure. uh, Nest or play on Rafters, for example, and you take these uh -huh. like long range gunfights that are like 50 meters long, mm -hmm. then the Guardian would be like just as good as a Phantom or Vandal. And meanwhile, Black also, kill. yeah, I'll, I'll buy like light shields, for example, to make sure I can have money for full utility. Mm, so then, light like, shield plus guardian. Yeah. Because okay. like having trips all over maze like really slows down pushes. Trips and, and cages like completely shuts down pushes when you like play play off them correctly. It becomes like extremely dangerous for anyone for any enemy team to like push through maze basically. And then, Understood. And then you would force them to like burn server drone to make it safe, or you force them to burn uh, sky dog to make it safe, right? And sure, like true. those utilities is, is like much more valuable than just like random trip. Mm -hmm. Especially if you if you don't place the trips in the same spots, you place them randomly in maze. Then then they can't just like pre fire it every every single time. They have to like really watch every single pixel like where the trip might be. Mm, makes sense. So just throwing that as an option, it seems like based on your place all here, you're playing longer range, then you probably want to, would probably want to prefer opting for a guardian with plus util instead. That's a spicy chicken clutch. I don't know about the buy. Unless one specter. I just stop using YouTube because it's not being really useful. I would consider buying Marshall. And then... mm. So let's see. The last round, the one A, oh and your team clutches it out. Oh, and let's see, do you press tab? The 1v1! Because pressing tab is really important. We press it for a split second. Yeah, I usually check like F every round pretty much. Um, yeah. Mm. So basically checking the team's the enemy team's economy so you can figure out okay are they actually gonna buy this round or are they just gonna eco right mm, so gotcha. if they're gonna eco then you're more likely to, to think that oh I can just get away with a half buy or I can get away with buying just a marshal especially if they just hit a the previous round and they failed at it most likely they're gonna mm -hmm. go somewhere else the next round not guaranteed but it's like higher probability that maybe they go mid or maybe they go B instead then Would you can. You yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Would you ever buy um, Marshall on a on a force round against rifles? Yes. Yes. Okay. If, if I can, like, uh, especially if I'm defense, I can like choose my engagements. I can choose where I can position, what angles I'm holding. Then, mm -hmm. therefore, I can choose to hold a long range angle. Like, for example, if I play rafters on on a site, 
mm. I play Valkyries and I look at Belt, right? Then if I'm holding a Marshall, I can most likely like confidently still go toe to toe against like a Van a Vandal Phantom. Especially yeah, would you go for like a headshot one shot or against rifles or would you go for like double body? I would go for headshot. Headshot, okay. Yeah, so in situations where I can like guarantee long range engagements, then yeah, I'll, I'll totally go with Marshall. Especially if I if I can't really afford a full buy with full shields, a phantom, or vando plus full utility. Gotcha, gotcha. And personally, I'm like I'm I'm a very frugal player, so even if I could afford it, sometimes I'll just buy Marshall anyways because like I, I play a little bit more greedy because I know that in this in this round here, most likely the enemy team is not going to be on a, a full full buy. Full buy man. because only like. Two or three people can actually full buy, and then two other people, at best, they can force buy. So most likely, mm. I can like get away with using a marshal. Smart. And, like, yeah, and be greedy that way. And then if I get a kill, or if my teammates gets a kill, or my, my teammate dies, I I have a path to upgrade my my gun. So I can go over there and then drop my marshal, and now I have a phantom or vandal. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. All right. Any more questions so far? Um, I guess I'm thinking like with the Marshall as opposed to say like a Spectre uh, on the on the eco round. The only disadvantage I might see is like even if you kill them, it might be hard to like actually take take their gun just because of the range. Yeah, that is like, true. If, if it's like Spectre or like let's say like you just save and right go for like classic right click something like that or shorty, you can pick up their guns a little bit more easily. That, is true. that was just like a thought, something that occurred to me. Yeah, that, that is yeah. a good point. So sometimes you have the luxury of when you get a kill, you you gain that map patrol. So let's say for example, if it was like uh, it was Haven A long on attack, and you guys are mm. you guys are pushing A long or you're, you're peeking A long rather with a marshal, mm. right? And um, it's very common for the a defender to peek A long sort of aggressively just because they want to see what's happening inside a lobby and therefore they're peeking into your marshal which is like a long range fight that 100% right. would favor you unless they had like a phantom vandal right mm -hmm. and usually it's uh a main is usually alone so if you get right. that pick i guess you can pick that gun up on on attack right exactly so there's okay. some specific scenarios where if you get a pick like that then you do gain map control off of it in other situations okay. like if you're playing defense on on a rafters and you get a pick on belts then you get a pick, but yeah, you don't necessarily have control of the belt, right? Right, 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 right. Okay, that's huge. Okay, I'll write that down. Gotcha. All right, uh, you can continue if you like. Okay. Good shit, I'm in. Oh, fuck. That's a spicy chicken clutch. I don't know about the buy. You know, it's one specter. I just... I don't know. Get early and Get out of my way. I would still buy another trip. Mid. In general, full utility. Yeah, As a sentinel is really important. Long. I got rolled. She's up mm. close to you, Cypher. Okay. Pushing me? About to push me? You crossed a little bit too close. Close to you, Cypher. Okay. Pushing. So, like, you're crossing here. It's, mm. like, really close to the wall, but what I'm expecting from the enemy that's pushing me right now is that they're, they're, gonna, they're definitely gonna wide swing this, right? Because mm -hmm. they're, they're checking, or they have to check many angles at the same time, and they're pushing really fast. So, yeah. it's, it's unlikely that they're gonna peek. Tight, it's more likely like they're gonna pick wide. They're not gonna tight. So my thought here, I think you can you'll be able to tell is I'm gonna swing with them. If if that makes sense. Like kind of mirror their swing. Okay. So I'm I'm trying to time it. But Okay, makes sense. Um I don't know that that's really strong because what yeah. I'm afraid of is for them to for them to actually expect it and just swing me and, and pre fire me, I yeah. guess. But yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the right move is. Maybe I just hold and re get ready for the wide swing instead of like trying to swing out with them. I would just um, I would just stand here, aim across mm -hmm. a little bit further away, expect a wide swing, spray like two to three bullets, and then after that, and then and then start moving. Yeah, and then start moving, and then convert to okay. the running gun, because gotcha. you you should have the element of surprise because they're not really expecting someone this close of a specter right around this corner. That you'll get the mm. first shot off, and then afterward you can be mobile to like focus on survivability. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But push me. So now like your cluster got even tighter, and I think uh, I think you stopped. That's why you died here. 
Like you decided to counter strafe and you crouched. No, you don't definitely don't want to do that. So the power of the yeah. power of respect there is that you're super mobile, right? Like running gun is extremely yeah. extremely strong. Could be, yeah, could be so I would say like if you have a spectator, just like try to abuse that as much as possible, especially if you're, gotcha. not, you're in a close range, uh, close range duel. Well, now obviously Do you think I could have even like swung out on them? Even that could be an option mm. as they as they got close. Maybe I think uh, if you swing out, you're you're more likely to also give up your angle advantage. Could gotcha. Hold. She's up close to you, Cipher. Okay. Because of like here, like how close you are to this angle versus <clears throat> this is me, how how close, how close they how, are. Yeah, yeah, how far? Well, yeah, how far they would be if they hug the, the opposite wall. They they would be farther from the angle than you are. Right, right. So then, if you swing out, then you would kind of sacrifice your angle advantage here. Makes sense. Pushing me, about to push me. In a two pushing it. So you probably would have won. You probably would have killed both of them if you just like went one again. I suggest. Gotcha. Hold off on the wall. Wall me. Wall yeah. me up behind. Wall behind us. Wall behind us. So they don't expect us. She didn't heal. Reyna didn't heal. Nice. Good kill. My, my, my wall cost a, a fortune. Coming mid. One more. One more. I think that can't be not, not necessary. <laughs> I guess because Ray's. So we already know that Rainer is mid. Mm. Okay, actually, never mind. Then no, yeah. Rainer dies. Rainer dies. And I don't know if Ray yeah. saw. Ray sees Sky right here as I yeah. as I yeah. can. One more, one more, no. one two. Planning it. Planning it. I guess I was already like kind of committed to camming, but um, mm. I mean, definitely, you... I, yeah, I shouldn't have. You can cam it, like to place it there, and then as soon as you see Sky, you think that oh, I don't need to camp anymore. I can just take my cam back. Hmm, hundred percent. Oh, that's fine. Oh man, you got flank. I'm stalling okay. for you. Could have gone kitchen. So we know Silver is A. We know that Sky is mid. Swing together. Following your teammates. One hit, one hit. Sky one hit. One one thirty. Not a bad round. This is it was a full eco. Personally, I don't really like to buy classic. Oh, not, not buy classic. Stay with a classic. <clears throat> Personally, I will buy like a sheriff or even just like a marshal or something and try to eco with that. Gotcha. Particularly on defense, because like there's many times like your, you got one more. your aim was actually not bad. Like your aim, your timing, it's just like the unluckiness of the classic. You got the headshot and then none of the other shots landed. And then even like here, like you have the right idea, you get the right click and it just doesn't commit to a kill. One hit, one hit, sky one hit, one one thirty. Like if you had like a deagle in either of those situations, you would have you would have killed both of them. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, what's, what are you thinking behind uh, this cam? So, there's, I guess I, I learned that cam from uh, like Bold Chaos, it was one of his like, cam he liked. He placed it a little bit more to the left so he they can see, he can see when the enemy is pushing. But I want to put it a little bit more to the right because I realize it doesn't give me like belt vision. Um, and otherwise, I guess I'm thinking like we should play passive with this cam just because it gives him a lot of map control without vision. Yeah. That's kind of what's going through my mind, but I don't know if this round I'm actually like playing that way. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. The only thing I'm thinking about this cam is that like, mm -hmm. if, if I was the enemy team, I'm pushing into A, like. Looking at screens, it's easy to see. Yeah, exactly. When, right? when, they, when they peek screens, like when they check right, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 100%. exactly. Mm. So if they push into A, I would almost expect that this cam is gonna like make this contact and get shot at, like almost immediately. Yep. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Let me take note of that. What I like to do, I'm not saying this, this cam is like good or bad. Just that, just throwing it out there mm -hmm. as a trade off, as like a downside. Um, it's like it's definitely something to start considering. Um, I, I kind of just like kind of stopped thinking about it as much just because like the one fucking streamer said oh it's the it's my favorite cam so i'm just <laughs> like oh that's strong but yeah you're absolutely right sorry uh go ahead 
So when I place a cam, what I like to mm -hmm. do is, is try to place it in such a way that it will catch the enemy like while they turned. So for example, so they have to turn around to shoot it, like a head, like a cam on say like B S, and you put it on top of the sign on the entrance, for example. Like uh, say for example, like you see this uh, column in front of you, like uh, we change to mm. epic pen. Like this what app is here. that? That's really sick. Epic pen, it's a free app. Epic pen, okay, gotcha. Like this wall here, or even this wall here, right? It's less likely that an enemy is going to be looking at a cam here while they're yeah. entering onto site. So something right. you could do is that you put a cam here, they enter site, you flip on the cam, you tag someone, and then let's say some person is here, and then they look at it, they shoot it, then you peek out, and then you catch them in a 180. Right, so, right, right, right. Gotcha. Right. Okay, so you're you're almost like using it as like a I guess like a distraction or like a fake flash. You make right. them turn around. Okay. Right. And, 100%. and you're also more likely to get a tag off because they're not really going to be looking at the cam compared to if you flip on the cam at, at screens most likely someone is, is almost always going to be watching screens mm -hmm. whether it's like uh, this entrance right here or the wall above it gotcha and for this uh, for this kind of cam you would jiggle it right you wouldn't have it like on well the enemy center you usually jiggle it um, on sound cue I guess for timing wise, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Okay. Whether you want to like keep the cam on so that you you'll see them when they walk through maze, for example, or they walk through sites, or push through site, whichever, right. or you wait until you hear that they're actually on site, then you flip the cam, then you peek out from wherever you are, catch them in a one eighty kind of deal. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. So I'll leave the timing up to you. There's pros and cons to each. Okay. Any more questions so far? Mm -mm. <clears throat> oh, this is a nice spot. Uh, the audio died, I think. Oops, sorry about that. Might be it. Might have been the epi pen. No, cause yeah, I'll yep, I switched this. I switched the stream. If you haven't right. comes, yeah, you should have come like immediately. This is a nice spot. So like right away, you hear gunfire, you hear footsteps. To me, it's, this is already two people. Mm. So, yeah, at, at these things, comes becomes more and more important where you don't want to just say some may, but you want to say specifically who yeah. and how many. Yep. As yep, well yep. as like um, what utility that you might see or hear. So in this scenario, mm -hmm. I would say 2A or at least 2A. And then I would say sky flash A. Yeah. That's 100% what I do, do in general, but uh, this round I just don't. Yeah, okay. you're right. Pipes, pipes. <sighs> so you guys kind of got overwhelmed a bit. Let's see, how can we play this a bit better? So, Rain is watching belt. I would consider peeking belt as well, or swinging when Rain makes contact with someone. But at this point, okay, it seems like no one's gonna be built. It seems like they're already on pipes or they're about to push from the orb. I would already mm. consider like falling back or having some sort of plan instead of sending directly okay. in sight. Gotcha. Let's see, what do we look at? Some We're still looking at the wall, still looking at the wall, still looking to the left. Pipes, pipes. Mm. It's just like kind of like looking everywhere, and yeah, I'm, I guess I was looking everywhere. also where Reyna was looking. Like, it's like a minor detail, but it's kind of like unfortunately like converted to your death. One health, one health. Like when you're when you're rotating, you want to like, keep your cross here at where the enemy style. can be, right? Not yep. So I'm not saying that you you so would that would have one. definitely survived if you had your cross here on pipes, but. It would definitely would have helped if you had your crossing on pipes. Yeah, like, I mean, whatever can increase my chances, I should be doing anyway. Let's see, what is the team buy? We have... Sheriff Heavy, Martial Lights, Specter... So, okay, looks like we're buying for next. Let me ask you... 
what are you thinking about the the shove heavy buy? Um, uh, I'll just it's the best light buy I could I could think of, and I don't know. Like I guess I'm not always sure about when mm. to pick between light shield and heavy shield. Um, so I guess that's that's a question uh, that I would have. I might have to look up some economy guide or something. But what are your thoughts? I would say buy heavy when you're trying to protect an investment, whether that's a rifle or like an operator. Uh -huh. Like here, buying, uh, like buying heavy to go with a, sh with a sheriff doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're not really trying to protect your sheriff. You're not really trying to stay alive, especially mm -hmm. in the eco round. You're looking to take, well, at least you should be looking to take like gambles and play more aggressive and just like mm -hmm. looking to steal a gun. That's like the main goal of this round is looking to steal a gun and right. get exit kills. Right. And then even if you're thinking about, oh, I should spend more money, then instead of buying heavy shells, just buy more utility because at least. That utility will carry over into next round if I don't use it. Right. But not a better gun, right? Like a Spectre Light Shield. It uh, depends how much money you have and if you can still buy for next. I wouldn't buy Spectre here because if you buy Spectre, you won't be able to buy for next. Or, or Spectre Light Shield would get me at 3,900, but that's cutting it close, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it all depends. It depends how you want to play out this round and what kind of read that you have. Expected okay. light is not necessarily a bad thing if you if you have like a hard read that they're gonna execute a and then you can like play maze or something. Play maze, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, makes sense. Okay, and uh, let me ask you, what are you thinking this to do this round? What is your game plan? Uh, I'm not. I'm not actually sure. I'm actually not sure. I don't think I have any any thoughts. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. There's this concept that on an eco round, you're, you, you take more risks. Yeah. yeah, you should take more risk, right? Because mm. if you just like kind of play normally, you're m most likely almost always going to be like losing the round because you're not going to be able to hold angles or hold sights with just pistols and expector at best against Phantom Vandal operator, right? Mm -hmm. So instead, That's you should be looking to take more risk to either gain map control or gain information. Right, gotcha. so for example, like pushing A. But if you have a good read that they're not going to be A, then you should just like play aggressive, like push to A, and then yeah. that gets you map control of A. That lets your other teammate who's also playing A, you can tell them, hey, rotate off A, just rotate to mid, rotate B, whatever, so they have early rotation. Once mm. you push to A, you have the we have more options. You can choose to flank to um, T spawn, or you can just hold, choose to hold close, like a uh, change. Mm -mm -mm. You can choose to hold close, like here, for example, so that if they, let's say they execute B, it fails for a reason, or for whatever reason, decide to run back and go A, now you have a really, really strong, like, unex like unexpected angle on them, like from mm -mm. being close, as well as you can gain information, you can hear footsteps of these people who are to mid if they push to mid, for example, right? So, lots of value to be gained by making a play like this, if, if it manages to pay off, like if, if you manage to get to the spot. Mm. So you gain map control, you gain information, you gain a lot of things for your team. Hmm. And I guess almost the, the lack of Utah as a Sentinel almost helps that kind of play because you don't have to worry about dying and then your, your Utah becoming useless as Cypher. So it actually makes a li even more sense Let's say you, if you don't have any trips down or, right. or cages exactly. down. So if you roll out with like a Spectre Light, then that's like a great play to make. If you can like manage to get there, that's like perfect, right? Mm -mm. We get like okay. insane value. Gotcha. If, if one or two people swing you, you can most likely kill both of them. Or it'd be good for at least one of them with a Spectre. Gotcha. So one bullet point so far is look to play aggressive on equal rounds. Mm -hmm. Well, play aggressive slash take risks on equal rounds. You're not going to be able to hold angles slash hold sights with just pistols and spectre versus rifles. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm already taking notes by the yeah. I got it. Yeah. Then follow up to this. Look to gain value through these risks by gaining map control, gaining information, 
possibly denying enemy information. And see what else. Yeah, map control information, denying enemy information, um, allowing your team to rotate early, etc. Yeah. I mean, you could always even get picks. Uh, yeah. For the code, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Yeah, let's see what else. Um, you do have a trip and you have a cage. What is your plan with the trip and cage? I'm not sure if I plan to use it. I don't know. Um, not sure, honestly. Because uh, generally on eco rounds, like, unless it's a really important utility, I, I don't always like to spend it. Um, just because the chances of winning are, are lower. But I can definitely see like maybe buying two cages to help me close the distance and use it to push. Or mm -hmm. maybe one trip if I'm holding against them, I can use like a trip to, to make it easier to get a kill. Okay. That's what I would I would do. Or or just not use them at all. Depends I guess on what I how I think they will play. Okay. So let me introduce this concept. I want you to mm -hmm. to try to have a more global presence. So so far you've been playing A for the past six or seven rounds. Like one round you went mid on a save round or whatever. But the vast majority of the time you've been playing A, and the yeah. vast majority of the times you've been putting your cam at A. You've been putting your trips and util all over A slash maze, right? But cipher trips can be used anywhere. Cages can be used anywhere. Cam can be placed anywhere. So don't think that you just you're you're, you're tied to soloing a site the entire game. Instead, yeah. a couple of rounds here and there, maybe put a trip at B, maybe put a trip at mid, maybe put a trip like in tube or in kitchen or something. You're like whenever you expect yeah. the enemy team to push a certain place, like put trips there. Meanwhile, right, right. you can you can still play A, but maybe you have trips like all over the map. We have cages all over the map. Gotcha. Yeah, I get what you mean. So if I put like a trip mid, right, I'd say even if we can't capitalize on that, it leaves them the possibility that I could put trips anywhere and maybe it slows them down just because of that possibility. Yeah. Or maybe help a teammate with it. I mean... Um, but why do you mention it uh, in this particular round? Uh, is it because it's an eco round? It's just kind of because I've, I've seen you... Do this the same kind of setup you're still oh, yeah, selling uh, a this up entire to this time. point yeah okay gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. if i was the enemy sense. team i would expect the cypher to be playing a and i would expect mm. his all his utility to be at a so that if for whatever reason we want to avoid a that means that we most likely don't have to worry about any of cypher's utility but cypher what do you can have think a, about yeah mm -hmm. go ahead. sorry uh what do you think about like i i, I sometimes think that I, I was thinking of maybe doing this a lot more often but just like just putting like a cam on a site to make them think that I'm playing that site, but then placing all of my like rest of my util in other places of the map. So basically, like I would say, like uh, put a cam for retake purposes, and and all my util, all my other util goes elsewhere. So that you know, sometimes I think ciphers here, so I, I we're not gonna push the site. They go B. And then my utility is uh, my trip uh, yeah. gets activated on on B side, for example. Yeah, that's like a really kind of specific mind game kind of thing. But you do have mm -hmm. you have the right idea that your your trips and utility doesn't have to be stacked in one site. Like you can put oh, put trips on the opposite site, put a camera on this site, right? And then meanwhile, maybe you play mid, right? Now you have okay. so much you're generating so much map control through cam, through your trips, through you yourself acting as a, a cam with a gun, like watching mid, right? Mm -hmm. That you have way more presence than if you stacked everything, including yourself, on pumps at A. Gotcha. Gotcha. Makes sense. So, yeah, basically what I'm trying to get at is try to think about the entire map, not just a single bomb site, and try to make them, make the enemy team respect Cypher's utility everywhere they go. Mm. And I was going to say that it is a bit tricky to play Cypher on such an open map like Icebox. Like even if you put a trip mid, 
Well, they still have two other options. They could go tube. They could go tube, underneath tube, under, right? On top, yeah. So it does become tricky in the sense that just because you put a trip there doesn't mean that that area is actually locked down. Mm. And, and most likely, I guess, I won't really be able to play something B just because, you know, I won't have time. Uh, you might be able to if you if you run the melee at the start of the round mm. to put mm. a trip, I don't know, at yellow or something, or, like, on site so that like say for example they uh, like a default thing that they would do let's see am i sharing can you see this drawing mm -hmm. okay great so the default thing that someone would do is that they're pushing b and they run directly to site but imagine if you had a trip that's like from yellow to here right mm -hmm. and that that will catch like the vast majority of people like off guard you're like not really expecting a trip like this way yeah and then I just tell my B team may play off that trip. Yeah, exactly. You can tell us, hey, hey, fall back to Snowman, wait for this trip to get activated, you put some crosses to it, get stuck, and this guy peeks out, gets a free kill. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so global presence. All right. Gotcha. So let me switch back to VLC. Let's see how we play this one. <clears throat> No more okay. charges left. Okay, you pause it with me ask you what you're thinking. I think I'm gonna take that fight actually. Okay. I'm not I'm not sure. I, I like I don't actually remember it because it was like a day ago. I don't remember exactly what I was thinking. Okay, so uh, but you probably have a point to make. What point am I making? I mean I I'm I'm just I'm just I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have some sort of plan, right? Some sort of plan. So, the first step is awareness. You saw that you cammed, you saw the jet. Yeah, that is a jet, right? No more. Yeah, that is a jet. And we see a skybird. So now you, Sky you know flash, this, yeah. there's at least two people here. And we're kind of in a one and done position. So, we have two options. One is we stay in this one and done position and try to catch them as like at an off angle. The second option is that we fall back from this position. Maybe we, we think that, oh, there's too many people here. Then we just fall back, maybe we play, we take with our team. Mm -hmm. Not saying that either of these options is good or bad, just that they both have trade offs. So the possibilities, okay. Different possibilities, right. So if we decide to run away, then we can save our utility and just like kind of just run off a knife out because unless Jet dashes up, like most likely we can get away pretty safely if you run immediately. But if we choose to stay, then I would consider using some utility to help us. Maybe you put a trip uh, like right in front of us. Maybe you put a, a, a cypher cage like on top of the orb so that let's say we go for a, a 1D, like say like uh, imagine if we were holding angle. Hold this, yeah. Oh, kind of. Yeah, imagine we're holding angle like this, kind of. Maybe a little bit closer to the left, but the same idea, right? And yeah. we go for that, that one tap, that 1D. And then immediately afterward, we go back behind cover, then we activate the, the cage, and we get out of there. Yeah, right? that so, will be smart. Yeah. yeah. So that allows us to play this off angle, get that one free shot, and then have an escape route. Gotcha. Alternatively, we can choose to put a trip in front of us, and then like in such a way, like not too far in front, such that Jet would immediately see it, but put a trip like... Um, a little bit closer to you, so that when Jet wants to push through this, then there's right. a high chance that she'll run into the trip, followed by like you peeking. Mm -hmm. And the downside to to that would be just possibly revealing your your position through the trip. Yeah. Well, okay. she won't exactly know if you're standing here versus if you're standing in maze. Right. So he just knows Cipher is close because he yeah. tripped. She'll just know that Cipher is close. So that's like a second option. Yep. Mm -hmm. But also that uh, she won't, if you do it quickly enough, she won't see the trip because of like where she's standing. So if you trip immediately, you can have it be hidden by the time that she wants to, and by the time that she peeks orb, for example. Mm -hmm. But timing is like being important. If you have, you have to do like immediately, you have to like come up with this plan immediately and execute yep. immediately. If you wait like even like one or two seconds, most likely she's going to see the trip and she's just going to shoot it. Is there a way to get better at something like this? Like thinking through that 
kind of possibility and decision making quickly. Um, just because I, I feel like it takes more deliberate practice than just grinding the game. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I'd say it's a lot of doing VOD reviews and even okay. by, either by yourself or with a coach and mm -hmm. also analyzing every single play that you make. Mm. And always ask yourself, well, even if it, if the play worked or even if it failed, doesn't matter. Just ask yourself, like, what could I have done better? What other options did I have? Right. So if you choose right. this option, where like, oh, I'm going to stay here and get, a, get try to get this one tab, ask yourself, oh, could I have, what other options could I have, like, escaped this? Maybe I could have played passive. And then you can ask yourself, oh, is playing passive better than playing aggressive with this one tab? Mm -hmm. And then, then you can ask yourself more questions. Okay, let's say you decide, okay, the one tap is better. Can I improve this in some way? If I go for this one tap, can I, maybe I can use utility. Oh, I can, I can cage so that my one tap comes safe. Or I can play off a trip and make it easier to go, for me to go for one tap because they're too busy um, running to my trip or dealing with my trip or shooting the trip, etc. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Right. So, but going back to the very beginning, you can only come up with these things based on awareness. And it seems mm -hmm. like so far your awareness is good. That uh, you camped, you realize that Jet is here, you see a sky flash, now you know there's exactly well, at least two people here, and then you can come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. And that plan is going to be different than if you didn't see anyone, if you didn't see a sky flash, if you didn't see a Jet, then you would have a whole completely different set of options of or a game plan to perform like maybe instead if you don't see anyone maybe you decide to continue pushing up as mm -hmm. opposed to falling back playing passive or going for a 1d gango example mm -hmm. makes sense makes sense okay any questions so far nope nothing okay He's left. Oh, you're fucked. I guess I was holding for pipes, and then <laughs> it went to shit. So many things you could have done. If you had a trip, you if you comboed the trip with this smoke, you probably would have killed someone. Yeah. Second thing is that if um, you put a cage chair, you probably could have escaped. Mm -hmm. Third thing is that if you like reacted quickly to shoot the dart, or if you reacted quickly and went inside the smoke, for example. Mm -hmm. Either like you go inside the smoke or you wrap around the smoke and then keep your crosshair on pipes because like that's the only thing you have to worry about unless some push someone pushes through smokes. Right? So that you use the smoke to help isolate angles. Hmm. As opposed to nice. I see the start, where I'm standing, I'm definitely gonna get tagged. Like unless I <laughs> unless I immediately like 180 flick that dart, I'm gonna get tagged and I'm gonna get shot to the smoke. So I'm automatically thinking I should just like get out of range of the start either by running to a maze or running inside the smoke gotcha one pipes but good kill in the sky though pretty good and i think that actually forces res so that's pretty good value Overall, not a bad eco round. This camp seems really late. Mm. Like if they were pushing A, you can't really just get shot at. I'm still, I think I definitely had to think about a few camp setups because I'm going through that mm. thinking a lot, like in the beginning, just mm. where to place my camp. Don't worry about mid, help you sage. Mm, too late. There's one mid lurking. As soon as I hear bomb being planted, I'm thinking I need to get this bomb site ACP. And then, yeah. okay, we're choosing to walk because we don't know if, if mid is clear. It's fine. But we still want to like try to clear this as fast as possible. Okay. Now sage is in a gunfight, and then bomb's planted. I would look to like just run at this point. Just run. There's okay. One so let's see. 
the main reason to walk here is because the enemy doesn't know if if like where your two two teammates are, where you guys are. <clears throat> so you keep an element surprise, okay, fine. Now Sage has made contacts. Now So it's you, lost. Yeah. yeah. Your position is, is like somewhat compromised. That if someone was mid, they'll they'll be ready. That they're gonna expect yeah. someone to peek from underneath tube or close to tube. So at this point you should just sprint. If you were a tiny bit faster, maybe you could have traded the Sage out. Mm -hmm. right. Nothing mm -hmm. mid. Lots. Lot A. Okay, let me pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Uh, just just to go help my teammate as soon as possible, because it's gonna be an A hit hundred percent. Okay, what else? Uh, pretty much, pretty sure. Um, I forgot what the the rest of my teammates buy is, but I guess I'm thinking like we've been we've been giving up A site sort of the same way. Um, so I think if I would have played it differently, I would I would have called for. Uh, some sort of retake, um, and, and to to not play like one and done. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna. We have alts, but I don't think we should be using them on on a Nico. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much I think all I have. Yeah. So the point I wanna. I also like here. left my my A side too. For yep. to like to cam the mid, so without okay. like leaving any util. That's something that I just noticed. I don't know if I was thinking that in game. Okay. Um, maybe I think I was like sort of. I had some sort of a read, or I got a feeling they're gonna go fast. Um, I think I was also maybe thinking. I think I yeah. I, I remember I was thinking like the cam, I'm gonna use the cam to get a little info yeah. and try to like push early with Sage. Uh, okay. Like I did that one time in on Nico, okay. um, but it goes all wrong because they they go fast A. Okay, would you expect him to go to go A, or what would you expect him from this round? Um, so I think yeah, this this team has been playing really really fast, so it would have been a fast A or fast B, like very very likely. Um, so in that case. I shouldn't have expected to to catch anybody in the in mid, and I think the last time we did it and did it successfully when they pushed mid, it just kind of was fresh in my mind, so that it kind of biased my decision. Okay. To to cam this and try to push, but in retrospect, it seems like I should have uh, maybe not gamble there, is if we have two duelists on a. Uh, that don't have buys, they have sheriff buys. Omen's the only one with uh, Phantom, most likely gonna end up like having to 1v, you know, get, get multi kills. So that's overall not the best decision making if I realize that my team was there. Okay. Uh, team, what, what, what buys we had and, and who was playing on A, as well as how they played. Okay. That's it. Okay. So I want. Say that uh, you like not everyone's gonna be able to read whether going A or B every single like perfectly every single time. Just that how you read the enemy would dictate like how you're gonna play this round. If you, mm -hmm. for example, if you expect them to hit A, then you have the option of either defending at A because you're a sentinel, or you have the option of playing aggressive on the opposite bomb site or the opposite place of that they're going. Mm -hmm. So if you have a read that they're going A then you could choose to play aggressive in mid and get like an early flank, for example. Mm -hmm. And that's the point that I want to bring up here. Because uh, yeah, we, yeah, we cam this, Body. we get information that there's nobody mid. That means that mid is like pretty much free, right? We can just like run up mid and then take it for free. Right, free, but, free map control. Exactly, mm -hmm. free map control, right? Free map control, free information. And instead of that, we, we choose to fall back to our team. So we had the option of going for like I mean, it's not like a guaranteed play, like, yeah, you can flake and immediately just kill, like, five people. Yeah. But yeah. I'm presenting it as, like, a high risk, but also high reward option. Like, very high reward that you're most likely going to catch at least one person off guard, get at least right. one free kill, 
maybe even take their gun and then possibly swing the round off of that, right? And those are the types of risks that you want to take and go for generally on eco rounds, as opposed to rounds, yeah. playing safe, falling back, and be like, oh, I need to like regroup with my team, reinforce them, whatever. But like, even if you reinforce them, like, what are you gonna do with like just a sheriff, right? It'd be really difficult. Yeah. It's a different that's, story. If, that's if you, sort of the traditional play, right? Instead of right, exactly. Game, just go home play. Yeah. It's a different story if you were the omen and you had a phantom. Then it's like, okay, yeah, definitely for sure. Don't go for this this flank risk. Instead, just like play with your team because you have a phantom. Make sure that if you were to die, if you die, your teammate, yeah, your, your teammate yeah. gets the phantom, etc. Yeah, exactly. And even like in this this situation, like this omen is, is playing B by himself with phantom. Like that's already kind of a risky play because like if they go, if the new team goes B, that phantom's gonna be lost. Like maybe mm. he's good for like one kill, but he's not gonna be able to get out. Maybe he can like TP out or something. Mm. Gotcha. And then other thing too, again, like global presence is that you can um, put your, like do this mid play, go for this cam. But let's say before you do this cam, you have like some trips at A. So that mm. if they do go A, you have you're still assisting your your two duelists in help in hold, helping to hold A and tell your team, hey, play off my trips. I have trips on maze, I have trips on site, whatever. Just play off the trips, you get an easy kill. Especially mm. if you have a read that the enemy team likes to play fast, things like trips and slows are like really strong against like fast fast executes because they're they're more likely to be like full sprinting into sites and not right. like playing slow or peeking one at isolating English. Check, checking yeah, the check, trips, yeah. yeah. Checking the trips, exactly. Hmm. Okay, so then uh, other thing too, so that's because because this is such like a golden opportunity to flank, that um, the, the reason why it's so good is because the enemy team does They also not have, have no flank watch. They exactly. don't have a sentinel. They don't have, yeah, they don't have like turrets or trips or... Exactly. Uh, chamber slow, yeah. They don't have a turret, they don't have any trips, mm. they don't have anything to watch flank. In order for them to watch flank, they have to have someone. They have to have a man, yeah. Yeah, spending spending a valuable resource. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really think about that this round, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever you have a chance to to look like that, you should basically take it and like punish the enemy team for not having any anything to do with flanks. Hmm. I guess the same goes the 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 other way. If I'm on a on a full buy and. They're on eco. I can expect them to do like a fast flank more often than not, as yeah. opposed to if they had a full buy. I, I would generalize it to say that if if they're on eco round, I would expect any team to play more aggressive or take aggressive. more risks. Yeah. And then also okay. then to that is that if we're on a full buy versus an eco round, I will be looking to play safer and take less risks. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Amazing, yeah. Okay. So let's see how we play assaults. Cage in cage. Arena's maze. Cage. Fight so far is just want to make sure that we're going in for a team. I don't know if this cam's gonna get shot immediately. Okay, where is our siege? Oh, okay. I'll stage the eyes while we're too busy camming. Yeah, the camera's kind of pointless. So, team kind of got Simo a little bit there. Not saying that the... That... I think I could have definitely cammed differently. Maybe like right above me, whatever that thing is called to my right. Um, that you can jump on. Uh, the one with the map. Yeah. Just yeah. to like give it less visibility, I could probably gain a little bit more info. But at this point, like info is probably I don't know. It's not a huge deal. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's more. We kind of know where they're gonna be playing. It's just yeah, it's exactly. Just like to win gunfights. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maybe a cage would have been. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. instead of worrying too much about utility, especially your your sense of utility is, is not as good for like not as useful for retakes. I would just mm -hmm. focus on making sure my timing is perfect with my team so that whenever my team is like peeking or pushing in i want to push in at the exact same time to make sure mm -hmm. that when, whenever they take a 1v1 i can force that to become a 2v1 mm -hmm. that's like gonna be more value than putting a cam putting a trip or putting a cage in this situation mm -hmm. 
I mean, the couple of cages they put here, you, not necessarily to like to cage to slow down the push, because like the other oh, audience site, like that cage is kind of pointless because the audience on site. But the yeah. second cage that you do, does make I guess sense. Well, I put it down and and I I activated it prematurely because I should have used it to gain space and yeah. be able to get close. Um, yeah. but I just kind of activate them and I also don't expect this sage wall. Uh, to come up, which is I should have expected that. Yeah, you should have expected it. She didn't use it for for default plant. Yeah, it should, they probably don't need it with with rifles. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm. So on retake, I would look to use cages more like the second one here, that you use the cage to help isolate angles, and help yeah. you help your team get map control, or get like get onto site, yeah. basically. So for example, you cage right, you look left. Exactly, exactly what you want to do. It's just unfortunate that this wall goes up at the exact same time. Or not even unfortunate, it's just like I should have just kind of expected it at some point, but I don't even think no. I was expecting it. But even like this, you pick this wall, and then, and then now it's like too late. They're just utiling out like crazy, and well, the cage dies. is already down. Like, uh, imagine if we had that, that first cage, that cage. here. Yeah, right? and we we chuck the cage over this wall, just like the this original cage here. Mm -hmm. So that way, we can push to the wall and focus solely on the left side, instead of worrying mm -hmm. about the right or worrying about um, the nest area. Mm -mm -mm. So that this like, this type of cage would help us isolate angles, therefore help us get onto site. But unfortunately, when we ch we do choose to like. Pick this. Now we're actually exposed to this jet here who's on top of Ness. Things happen really fast. <laughs> I'm taking like way too okay, long yeah. with these cages, but I, I, I'm sure it's gonna get better over time. Just yeah, ideally oh, you you yeah. still needs to be placed like immediately. Yeah. So we got two cages each side. We put a trip, and we're taking like five seconds to put this thing. <laughs> so may again. And then we take like another five seconds to put a cam. Like there's already a gunfight happening in front of us. Like what I want to see. Did I mention that... I'm new to cipher? <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. something to work on. Just like ha try yeah. to have like these these setups like already built into your head, so that you can just execute yeah. them as fast as possible. That's one thing I'm definitely learning is like the value of freeze time and like how I could be using it. Because with other agents, sometimes you can just kind of take your position and like yeah. mess around. Way you can't really do that with Cipher. Okay, yeah. So we put this trip. Problem is that already this Reyna, oh, Reyna's in a gunfight. She's fighting someone in belt, and then she does yeah. manage to win it. But ideally, we should be like peeking with her. Like we should be swinging mm -hmm. left side to also peek belt at the exact same time. No, no, no. So that like that convert like guarantees a kill basically. Hmm. Hmm. again. Unfortunately, hey. like all is like so late. Because like Arena dismisses, she's trying to get the cover. She's doesn't have anyone to back her up, and then she immediately like, kind of dies. And meanwhile, like, we're kind of body just blocked her too. Yeah. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're just canning. Oh. Oh. So bullet point for now is uh, try to be faster. Setting up. This goes here. So be... Okay, let's go to camera. Okay, default cam. Flat goes there. Menu trip, menu cage, cage left. 
I might try and set a goal to finish my setup before uh, freeze time ends, like going forward, just to yeah, just yeah. To improve that. Sometimes it's not always possible though, because sometimes you want to put a, a deep root trip, like for example. Yeah, uh, like the... wait for the barrier. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but sometimes you have to like wait for the barrier to drop before you can do that type of trip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, one thing you could do is that uh, you can place your setup normally, as you see here, and then as the barrier drops, then you pick up the trip and then you re you remove you remove move it further, right? Yeah, you push it up further. <clears throat> I guess that's why, like, I I might want to think about just having some standard setups, um, and then I just vary it according to the situation rather than thinking through the entire process every single time. So if uh, one trip gets discovered, I make maybe make note of it and then put it in a different spot mm -hmm. or according to how they play. Yeah. But that's the point of like the value of like a standard setup. As much as people say like don't just rely on their setups. Um, it would be valuable to start off with as a new cipher main. Okay. Yeah. Another thing I want to point out too is that it's last round. Mm -hmm. Generally, last round you want to full buy, and by full buy it yeah. also means that you should upgrade your pistol. Secondaries, yeah. Yep. Oh, this is a nice spot. This goes here. <laughs> Get out of my way. This so this here. cage here, I would actually put it a little bit closer, like. Oh, you put the this cage here toward the the barrier. I would do the same thing. Because you got to think mm -hmm. of your your cage as a smoke, and you want to have your smokes like flush with the chokes, so that if the enemy decides to push through their cage, push through your cage, they have less options. So mm -hmm. uh, let's go back. So I get a video. Do you always recommend pairing your cages with trips, or are there? Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are, but there's occasions where you should kind of separate them so sometimes i feel like they're like almost like a, a, a what should we call it it's like redundant sometimes yeah. i feel it's situational sometimes you do sometimes you don't it all it really all depends on the situation what you're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. yeah so i want to talk about the this cage here like so imagine your cage gets activated it's like a smoke right it covers like this and someone's gonna push through your cage, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then they have the option actually to go this way. They have the option of going this way, this way, this way, right? Yep. yep. This is too many angles for a defender to deal with. Like they can leave mm -hmm. your smoke in one of many different ways, and it actually helps the enemy team in some way because they have you're giving them more options to get more map control. Right. 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 So instead, imagine if your smoke was like this, so that if they push through. They have less options now. If you if you were watching this angle, for example, you indirectly also watch this angle at the same time. You you mm -hmm. can watch like all this part at the same time. Hmm. True. 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 I guess I stopped thinking about my cages and smokes, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. So just a minor thing for now, but we'll see if that becomes uh, like if they actually abuse that. Yeah. <clears throat> One egg. Cover going up. Check on that sage is A. Calm someone's maze. Calm that silver is here. So you mm, already, the dart, yeah. Yeah, you see at least two people already. You see that silver darted. No more so I should be like probably calming this real time as it happens. Oh well, this this cage is really holy shit. So it's actually even bigger than it. it's worse than I expected. <laughs> that if someone was in the cage, they, they can just run into sight already. And then actually, yeah, it isolates in this bummy one. Well, I'm not saying that's like good or bad, but like generally you don't want to be like giving the enemy isolated bummy ones. Instead, you want to be mm -hmm. like force them to peek into as many angles as possible. Yeah. So I just kind of like deleted my sage temporarily because of that cage. Up here, belt. Up belt. Mm. Careful peeking. I got crossed with you, Reno. Careful pushing. We up bomb. We up spike. I would move your trip. Careful peeking. I would also lift the ults. So I didn't even think about moving my trip. That's actually huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. Wow. Kill. 
so much Just I can H. do. Let me kill Reyna. Great. So now it's a 5v... Uh, 5v4. Okay, yeah, Reyna is still alive. Up. She dismissed out, I guess, or something. She managed to escape. Okay, unfortunate. But we do have bomb down. And it's unlikely that your chip is going to make first contacts. Like, your omen... Oh. Yeah, your omen's, like, in maze, having, like... Uh, like someone of an aggressive angle toward uh, the corner of belts mm -hmm. that you know, if someone were to come and pick up the bomb you're almost going to make first contact instead we want our trip to make first contact so yeah. either we take our trip and we push it up closer to maze or and tell almonds like hey play off the trip like maybe put a trip on top, right top of the bomb so mm -hmm. it really forces the new team to deal with the trip before they can pick up the bomb or, or I put it screens or for flank watch. Yeah, exactly. So we look yeah. at the minimap. All five of our teammates are like super focused on maze, on belts, on the A orb. Mm -hmm. Right? Nobody's really turned around to watch flank, but we can watch flank with our trip. You manage to yeah. have a trip on mid or a trip on on screens, right? That would be like a huge help to our team, so they can rest assured that no one's gonna come mid. Or if someone does come mid. Then it would have to be well. You can't even be from kitchen because because kitchen blocked up, walled off. It would have to be like a really long flank before someone can possibly come behind them, without activating the trip. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So yeah, I would either move the trip to be on top of the bomb and then try to make the trip be first contact. Maybe communicate with that team, tell your own, hey, don't pick this, wait for wait for trip, or I would move the trip to watch flank. Because mm -hmm. right now your trip is not, it's like doing nothing. Okay? Gotcha. So, and the second thing I would look wow. to do is that mm -hmm. because we have at least one dead body in front of us, like the sage who dropped, died and dropped bomb, I will be looking to get a vault off ASAP. And then look to make a play based on what information that we get. Mm -hmm. Well, that tells us oh, all, all four people, like if, say for example, we activate the alts and, it, and we find out all four people are outside of A, like they're belts, they're like outside A, whatever, right? Then mm -hmm. that tells us that we have tons of free map control that we can immediately push up mid and possibly even just like watch flank. Well, even not watch flank, but like push push up and get a flank. Mm -mm. So it keeps them, keeps the enemy team contained at A, that they don't have mm -hmm. the option of going T-spawn, they don't have the option of going from T-spawn to mid, for example, without first running into you, maybe you're holding some off angle, whatever. So for example, uh, let's go back. Uh, actually, let's go to let's go to a map. But I don't know. Like in this case, as long as I have the flank watch with with the trip, couldn't you argue that it's better to concentrate our forces just near bomb and just hold it like that? Like map control might not be as useful if the bomb is down. Map control, because... is, map control is always useful. Always, always useful. Okay. 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 So. You see this picture map? Mm -hmm. Okay, so imagine if okay we have a bunch of people on you know, screen, site, whatever, maze, nest, whatever. Someone's on rafters, I don't know five people, right? And then we spot we activate the cipher out, we find out someone's on belt, two people on belt, one person's T spawn, another person's like outside of nest, whatever, they're all A, right? Mm -hmm. So we activate the alt and we find out they're all here. One option we have is that we immediately push mid. And then we either, let's say we stand on two and watch from T-spawn. Let's say we hold this angle, watch T-spawn. Or let's say that we get really close, we hold close. And right clear. Or we hold close. Or we hold really mm -hmm. close, like in front of this barrel. Something like that, or behind the barrel rather. Or let's say we decide to hold here on top of uh, this, mm -hmm. this container, container yeah. right? And then we, we look this way so that if the enemy team decides that oh we're all four stacked on a let's send like one or two people to go mid right you could you cut off this rotation so you deny the enemy team map control you, you deny deny options meanwhile you gain more options for your team by going mid so imagine if if you were standing here right is like really strong why is this really strong because it plus rotations and because it keeps the enemy team Contain and A. The only option is to go toward A. They can't go here without running into your your flank. Mm -hmm. And because it gets your team options, your team could be like, oh, mid is, mid is open. Let me just like go on a wild flank. Meanwhile, we still have one, two, three people watching bomb. And this should be more than enough to, to like stall them from getting the bomb. Meanwhile, I can go on this huge flank. 
Interesting. So your team has more and more options, and it denies the enemy team options. Imagine if you have one, two, three, four, five people on site, and then the enemy team, because they have at least a minute, let's see, almost they, they have a minute and eight, that's like plenty of time for one or two people, one, two people to go mid. And maybe they, they go, and now they have, now your team has to have somebody watching screens. Now you have to stop somebody watching maze, somebody watching left side, somebody watching belt, right? Now everyone is like, all these resources is, is spread thin. Hmm. And I guess, I guess heaven. It, it's really down yeah. to having to watch screens and, and rafters versus um, only having to watch uh, T-spawn. So that's that's the trade-off. Seems like if you push up all the way to to T spawn, plus you get teaspoon. a little bit, uh, you get like the added bonus of an off angle because if you're watching screens or heaven, there's only so many places you can watch it from. But if you have the map control, then you could be pretty much anywhere through yeah. the throughout the path of the enemy team to to the bomb. So bullet points take map control when we or slash safe to do so. When it's safe to do so, okay. Taking map control gives your team more options, more angles, etc. And also and or at the same and at the same time. Denies the enemy team options angles. <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions so far? No, I'm I'm trying to think of a case where it would be a, a it would there would be something that have to be given up in order for in order for you to take this map control. Um the only thing would be like if you you spot you alt you spot two people on belt, but you spot three four two people three, four, and, mm. heading toward mid. Now yeah. now this mid is no longer free, but now you have to consider about whether you want to contest mid. How do you want to deal with these people pushing mid? Maybe you put a trip here. Maybe you put a trip here or something, and you play off this trip. Mm -hmm. How you want to play off of it, etc. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Gotcha. Or say like maybe you have like an alt or something and you going to take map control as an individual unit could put that alt at risk. Let's say it's like a, a, something like a sage res or something that could like win you the round. Maybe you would yeah. send someone else to take it instead. Like uh, there's always like some kind of risk to taking the map control even if it's free, right? Because you have to hold the map, con map for map control. Mm, that's true. So you do have the trade-off that if you were standing here, kind of rotation, that if they don't rotate out, if they all four of them push toward A, now mm -hmm. it's no longer a 5v4, now it's a 4v4. 4v4, yeah. So, so I guess, you, yeah. you're sending one person in exchange for trading for map control. And if you had the choice to trade for map control, uh, uh, like who to pick, you would pick the one with the le least value and the biggest chance to be able to hold that angle. Yeah, I would say in general, you should take map control because map mm -hmm. control is usually it's, it's most of the time, not... yeah, most of the time it's like good value for your team. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay, any questions so far? Mm -mm. Okay, so let's go back to real C. This is yep. really helpful, have been helpful so far, by the way. Just yep. thinking through everything, yeah. Two belt, two belt. So definitely yeah. want to ult ACP, get an ult off so we can get information. I got with you right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're pushing, we have bomb. We have spike. I'm pushing your team, is not listening to your comms. We have bomb. So we the have next best thing is to make sure that you push with them. Mm -hmm. I got cross with you right now. Careful pushing, we have bomb. We have spike. They shouldn't be pushing, but they are anyways. So yeah, these are the push of them. Okay, there you can ult. Hopefully you ult. Oh, unfortunate. So, luckily your team kind of just kind of clutches it for you, but definitely a lot of things you could have done to like make this a lot easier. 
Mm -hmm. And otherwise, like more guaranteed. Oh yeah, I love this trip. Really watches uh, B push. I don't know if I exper I should experiment to find out, but can someone jump on top of that yellow box if if we're going B and they're flanking from mid? The yellow box. You mean like? Yeah, the the yellow box to the right, and like, can they jump over the trip that way? Oh, that's a good question. I Let's see. I don't think I'm so. Wondering. I don't I'm wondering so. if it's only valid for stopping like a B flank. I think that box. Okay. I think the box is too far away. Yeah, yeah, got it. Unless maybe it's like a jet, but that's. It's very rare anyway. I'm gonna try and use my cage and learn how to push with the cage. There's another trip you can put that watches mid as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. Um, do you just mean the one like going diagonally? Yeah. Um, diagonally from the from really draw. Yeah. I don't know the, the exact spot, but there's a trip that you can put that uh, covers. That covers. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, unless like the jet like jumps over or someone TPs on top of the container, then mm -hmm. most agents would have to deal with the trip. Spike down A. Well, one screen, I think. No one flank. You don't have the bomb, you don't I'm, have the bomb. I'm gonna get bomb. Enemy remaining. Tiny detail is that whenever you check cam, no you wanna make sure yeah. that you're... You're safe. You're safe. Well, one screen, but... Here you're actually exposed to maze, which is not a huge deal, cause like, your team is kinda like on site already, but who knows, maybe someone could be peek from, from maze. Second yeah. thing, it's like really, really minor detail is that, uh, you want to maintain your mobility while you're camming. Because like while while you're camming, mm. you're, like, you're sort of standing still, right? But you could be gaining, I don't know, a couple of seconds while you're camming, while still moving toward the objective, moving toward the site or something like that. So what I mean by well, how do you mean? So do you just mean like jiggling the cam? Like for example, while you're while you're dropping. No one's Oh, dropping towards the bomb. Yeah, you, oh, like right here, okay. you're dropping, you cam, and then you that's cam. actually so pro. <laughs> So you're doing two things at the same time. You're still dropping, picking up bomb, and you're still camming to check flank. And when you're camming to check flank, try to do it like as quickly as possible. Okay. Okay. Like you kind of just like want just like flash it. You just need to like try to get like this uh, mini map, this um, like uh, mental picture, I guess, like uh, like this picture in your head. And try to like, I don't know, I'm not sure how to explain it, but basically like, don't spend like too much time. Like a snapshot, yeah. yeah. Like a snapshot, right. But don't spend like, here you spend like almost you one to two bomb, seconds. You know, Instead you can just like spend less than a second. Because you just need information that someone is there. You're not necessarily trying to tag them with your, your cam. Do I even need to look at the screen necessarily? I can just jiggle the cam and look at the mini map, right? Yeah, you can also do that. You can just like double tap the cam and then the piece, the cam will see them, and if they see them, they will show up on the mini map. Yeah, so that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. So normally, even if you're not jumping off the ledge, I guess if you really want the mobility, you can like jump on purpose and then like check your cam midair. Yeah, you can also do that. I wouldn't to, like, do it really, to yeah. really min max. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wouldn't. Wow! Use... Wow! I wouldn't do it here because on your on the high ground, if you would jump off of it, you would uh, take fall damage. To fall them, yeah. But if you're just like on normal ground, then yeah. Like, you, said, the you, bomb, you can do yeah. things like that. How many hours do you have on uh, Cypher? Uh, probably not that many. I don't really main Cypher, I don't really main anything. Okay. I don't know, I don't, I've never even thought about that. That's crazy. Can you put the camera on the, on the ship? Does that work? Uh, on the ship, I'm not actually sure. I probably check. I just, I don't think I've seen people do it. I'm just kind of like mimicking somebody else. Okay. I just thought that would be a good spot, like relatively hidden. And plus, like I don't have two trips, so I'm worried about the mid flank. Okay. Uh, this time I can probably trip. So I darted from boiler. Mm, one, four, ten, close. <clears throat> Here, what I felt. Min maxing again. Four, ten. So, what, from so, originally, you have your knife, you're rotating, 
you gun take your gun out because you don't know if someone's mid. Then you whip out your knife again because you want to get to your team ACP. But then you switch back to your gun. But why? I can I can still knife. Yeah. Yeah, you can still have your knife out. Because like where your team is, like they, your team's gonna make first contact before you're gonna make contact with anybody. So yeah. it's more important that you get to your team ACP. Uh, I think you screwed over your sage. One flank. Screens one. One screens one flank. Cause are you saying that because someone could have been like in the right corner? One fourteen close. Said because like uh, you threw a cage directly on top of her and she's like already in a gunfight. Uh, so I like force her to push out of the smoke essentially. Yeah. So imagine yeah. like you, you're your controller and you drop a smoke right on top of your team. Uh, yeah. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. One flank. Screens one. One screens one flank. What was this? The second cage. Fill the first cage. Activate it. Fill the second cage. What's the idea behind the second one? I guess I was just trying to gain gain space. Um, I wasn't really thinking about exact placement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the second cage is kind of a waste. One flank. Screens one. Actually, um. Now I'm really concerned. It would have been nice if I put it uh, close enough to, to like isolate the fight versus heaven, I guess. Um, but it's too yeah. far to do anything right now. If you did it closer to the left, that would make sense. Like so, generally, you to use, the left, yeah. yeah, use cages to isolate angles, right? Mm -hmm. So, or use uh, 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 cages to isolate angles, or cages to like help things be safe. Think of it as like a smoke. Mm -hmm. And like an example, we like might be like dropping a cage on top of your sage while she's planning to make that plant 100% safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, this cage actually not a huge deal because no one's. It's really unlikely that someone could, is going to be here, but possibly someone could be inside this cage. Right. If someone just happens to be like, if you they time it just so perfectly, like they were on top of the, the cage here. when you activated it. Yeah, you're right. Back mid, I think. I don't know why I jiggled that camp. Don't put, don't put that, he's gonna shoot it. Or he's gonna ignore it. <laughs> I guess it worked out timing wise, but it could have gone very wrong too. Uh, I think, uh, instead of worrying about the, the trip here, Wait, he went back, he went back. I would just, uh, just focus on setting up this crossfire with your sage. Mm hmm. And then, I mean, alternatively, if you if you insist on using this trip, I would not use it there where he's gonna really gonna shoot it. I would use it a bit closer. So mm -hmm. I would mean, I mean, like, uh, I would unless I'm here. unless I have really good coordination with Sage and I'm like he's about to peek me and I'm using it as bait, and then Sage peeks off of it. Well, there's no way like, mark. he he could stand here. And he would shoot, shoot the trip. He yeah. would shoot this trip. He would shoot this one. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. So, generally, you want to put it where they're it, yeah. not able to, to see it and shoot it immediately. So, like mm. here, for example. And then, if you were to put this trip, then I wouldn't be standing where you are. I would stand deeper inside maze. So, like here's like mm -hmm. this cover thing, right? Mm -hmm. And this is maze. I would stand like here. Yeah. And just like jiggle from information. I want to jiggle to see right. where he is, if he's standing here, and then like which direction he's going. He goes this way, he goes this way, whatever. Just jiggle for information. And then try to play off the trip. Or meanwhile, also playing off your sage. So sage yeah. is playing here. When, let's say, you're standing here and you're looking in this direction, and then the sky shows up here. Right. And peak on contact. Yeah. You take this, this duel, and then the sage swings right. And then yeah. trades, trades. Yeah. So in the in conclusion, basically, rather than try to place a trip, it's probably just better to to wait for that that contact play. Yeah. If you want to be really safe, then yeah, you can just like put the trip, play off the trip, plus also play off contact. But most likely, you don't really need to even put the trip because like they're it's just a classic. They're an eco. Yeah. True. True. Okay, so back to the C. We get the kill, let's see. Exactly how do we get the kill? Okay, time for a break. Okay, good. Sage, let me hear your ghost. Thank you. Uh we can go 
like go under two and yeah, go under, two. try to just get bombed down. I just have one cam for flank. Alright, waiting for smoke. Omen, uh, you're pushing A alone. Can we get a smoke boiler, please, Omen? So, pushing A alone is not necessarily a bad get thing. A smoke boiler, please. Like, he Omen. probably wants to lurk. Looking is good. Sage did him wall, Sage did him wall. One spoiler. It's a redundant, redundant Sage cage. Sage did please, Omen. So, you already asked your Omen to smoke? He's in the middle of smoking, and then you spin a cage. They sit in wall, they sit in wall. In this uh, cage? No, I wasn't, I didn't think the omen w was gonna help us actually. So I just decided to cage. Because Pretty much like right as he smoked. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at the mini map. He's, the, the smoke is all out. He, on its the way. smoke is coming out, yeah. The second thing is that this cage is like they really bad wall, because there's a gap. There's so a gap, yeah. If that was enemy, yeah, exactly. I'm spraying through this gap. Mm -hmm. And then if this omen, like, like didn't smoke, then you would probably be dead. You and your sage yeah. would probably be dead. One spoiler. Oh, spike carrier is yeah, just like that. Calm down, so. down <laughs> has A. You can go there. I'd be yeah, really yeah. careful pushing up too, because it's like what I would expect. Spoiler. Oh, yeah. If I was enemy team, I was at Sova. I'm smoked out, and I don't have eyes on on tube. I'm expecting someone to be Calm walking down, tube. Down, down, mid. Mm -hmm. Omen has A, you can go back. I have flank a good, good kill. Oh I play a bit faster, it's good. Player standing. 42 Unlucky timing. I kind of panics right there. Yeah, you could have just... uh, Is there a way to stop doing that or do that less? I thought I could just practice like bursting and moving in deathmatch, but it doesn't actually translate into real game. Just play it's Guardian still panics, right? Play Guardian more. Play Guardian one tap? Yeah, Sheriff, Guardian, I, Marshall to force yourself. I do that. do that though. <laughs> <laughs> I already do that a lot though in, in DM. Actually, half the time, half my DMs are Sheriff one taps. The other thing you could do too is just unbind Crouch. Unbind Crouch, okay. I'll try that actually. Or bind it to like some faraway keys. So, like, if you mm -hmm. really need to crouch, okay, the option is there. But you need to crouch yeah. up or something. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. But I won't let that too much. Is that just kind of comes down to the just mechanics. Flank, guys? Yes, this should do. Mm -hmm. Is that how he died? She was on her tube. Okay. She dogs here. Interesting cage. Oh, I'm assuming uh, it was an accident. I I have these quick, quick things sometimes where I just like mis I mispress. Right. I don't know how to one, one, yeah. stop one, doing one, that. One, one, one. I'm just gonna assume an accident. I'm fucking throwing. One under two, under two, one. Two there. there. Up to. Up. Right, I rotated back. We should move out if we can. I got your luck. I need detail. Well, okay, let's talk about two things. One, 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 one minute, one minute. Is that we well, would a lot of flank. I'm fucking throwing. So let me ask you, what are you thinking here? Um, that <laughs> I'm. I want to check where the rain is possibly and and take that fight. But I'm worried about the A main like early flank. So I'm thinking I wanna maybe not check my cam there. And I'm also thinking my team is pushing fast, so I gotta catch up with my team. So. As I'm catching up with my team, I'm trying to jiggle the camp to to confirm that the Reyna didn't actually push out. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Yeah. One, one or two. One, Let's say for example, you can't. So we cam, and then let me ask you, what's the purpose of this camp? Uh, to check if the the Reyna is close or okay. pushing. So if we find out that she is pushing, then what? Mm -hmm. Well, not to say picking, uh, but let's say that, um, mm -hmm. let's say that she's standing here and then she shoots yeah. your cam. And then I we'll... would, I, I would, I would try to peek, but I guess in this particular instance, I'm a little bit part too far away from the corner to actually capitalize on the, on Reyna shooting the cam Yeah. anyway. So it got, kind of mm -hmm. doesn't really have, get a lot of value. Right. So yeah. if your goal was to peek off the cam, you're too far away to peek off the cam. Mm -hmm. If your goal was to um, do a timing where you want to 
gets Reyna to be like here. Then you cam. Then she looks at the cam. She shoots it. Then you peek from wherever you are. Let's say you're here. You peek from here. Or let's say you're inside the, this building here. Um, mm -hmm. So you're like inside this building with this doorway, something like that. And you're standing here. And so then, I would have, I could have waited even more to uh, to check the cam until <clears throat> it was timing for her to get to that X. Yeah. Or I guess listen for sound cue. Okay. Yeah, you want to do one or two things. Either you want to peek off your cam. If you're going to peek off your cam, you want to hold close and be ready mm -hmm. to peek off of it. Or you want to move toward your team and then cam get a, get like a timing cam, so to speak. Where if this man is pushing in, she's like standing in like this area, this sort of mm -hmm. box. She's standing inside here, and then you activate the cam. She looks at the cam, then you peek out. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So one of those two things. But here you are, we're kind of in the middle of both of them, and not really accomplishing either of those things. I would say the safest play is to stand inside the building. So let me go back. Let's do. <clears throat> okay, so we're in T spawn and we have some cam inside here. What I would do is that I would, uh, we're standing here, I would run inside garage so that we're closer to our team. We do, we do mm -hmm. two things at the same time. We're getting closer to our team mm -hmm. and we're setting up for a timing where if Reyna pushes us into this box here, then we do this timing with like we activate the cam. She shoots the cam, whatever she looks, looks at the cam, then we come out and we peek the doorway. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And then if we find out that, okay, this Reyna is is no not in mid, no longer or, or nowhere in vision of a cam, we can deduce that worst case, she's sitting here. Best case, she's rotating to her team. Mm -hmm. And either of those two cases, then where we're standing inside garage, now we're much closer to our team, we can help our team much sooner. Mm -hmm. Or I guess the complete opposite way mm -hmm. is if you were pushed up and you know you you do the same thing, you could actually be in position to take more space and flank through. Yeah, that's another option. Mid. So good point. Yeah. yeah, but like you're you waiting on this corner, and then you cam early because you want to catch Dorena in this box. You want to catch her standing here. You cam it. She suits the cam. You swing off of it. Try to catch her off guard, get the kill, whatever. Like getting the kill, now you have control of mid. You can go mid, you can go underneath tube, whatever. Set up some sort That's of flank. Smart. smart, smart, So this would be like a more aggressive play. And then the safer play, like like higher risk, high reward. Take the swipe with go mid, take mid control. The mm -hmm. safer but lower reward play is to hit to a two team and help them push to site. Mm. Wow. Okay. So it depends on um, like, like risk management, like how confident are you taking that mm -hmm. duo of Reyna or how risky do you want to play this round? Like, is it really crucial that this round is won or lost or whatever? So that's a whole different topic about like risk management. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Second thing is that our team kind of gets slotted. We should move out if we can. I got and then we want to, while we're here, now it's just two people, two, 2v3, right? And we want to time our peaks with this omen to make sure that we don't inadvertently give 1v1s. So this initial peak is good because we're, we're both shooting at the same target, or we're both peaking at the same time. When this happens, we're both shooting at this jet or whoever. It's in the air, drop down. But then, reading our teammate's body language, this omen's moving toward cover. He's moving toward cover, we should probably also move toward cover. That's what's gonna mm. happen. Someone peeks out, this jet's peeking us, we're in a 1v1. And then we can't, uh, this omen's too far away to help trade us. Yeah. Or I guess I could have caged and taken, taken yellow. Well, um. Okay. So. Some details here. What I would do <clears throat> is either you play non-committed. By non-committed, meaning like you play more, play a tighter angle, like this, right? You so that you only see the, exactly what you need to see. You only see the left side. 
of this uh, uh, stage one, wall. one second. The screen got really blurry all of a sudden. I'm not sure what's going on. You blurry? Okay, let me change it. Uh, I can't really see much. Is okay, it? it's back. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're isolating angles so that we're only focused on exactly where the enemy, enemy can peek us from, which is the left side of the wall. As opposed to here, it's a little bit too much of a wide swing. I mean, the initial wide swing makes sense because, like, Omen's in a gunfight. As soon as o Omen is no longer in a gunfight, we want to change our stance so that we're no longer committed. We're no longer, like, standing out in the open. So that mm -hmm. if someone were to peek us, like, we're too far away from cover. Now we have to take this gunfight. So, initially it was both active. <clears throat> now Omen's going towards passive, but I'm still active. So right. I'm going to get, get caught off guard, on v warning. Right. And then, so if we're choosing to stay at this angle, like the other option would be like running across and getting to yellow ACP. And mm -hmm. if we wanted to do that, then we can also choose to um, take the gamble by running their ACP, or we can choose to make it safer by spending a cage. Mm -hmm. In which case, I guess if I were to try and take the classic, uh, cross, I could cage it, but then there's three people already on site. So yeah. they could. They're, they're on they site, could be but anywhere. Mm -hmm. they're. Okay, let's go back to drawing. I Any... think I'm worried about the one on the top most, possibly. Someone could uh, be here. Whatever that call out is called. Yeah. But um, that. This angle on, on site is not really going to see Omen. Mm -hmm. It's really only going to see like this part of yellow, like this cross here. Right. And what I'm mo most concerned about is like pe people peeking off of the sage wall here. On top of the wall? No, to, like, to the left of it. Oh, because this, the, the sage okay. wall, even though yeah, there's people on site, but this wall helps us isolate those angles. So now we only have to, really have to worry about the left side. And to some extent, on top of site. Let's actually let me go to a bigger map. So we are on bomb site B, and then we have an omen who's here, and then we're a cipher. We're here, and then there's a sage wall. That's uh, what does it look like? That looks like this. Here's mm -hmm. the sage wall. So I'm worried about someone to the left of the sage wall. It's unlikely that someone's gonna be on top of the stage wall except Jet, and if she does that, she'll have to like like jump like super jump into the air. Right? So it's it's unlikely. And the other spot to worry about is like someone on top of sight. And when someone's on top of sight, they can't see the omen, they can only see like this um uh, mm -hmm. they see like this cross. So if we're choosing to run across, then yes, that is something to be concerned about. We have to be careful about someone being top of sight, as well as someone being left side. Right. So, if you want to be safe, you could cage it, mm. make it 100% safe. If you were to cage it, then you could go, like this keeps going down like a, like, like a rabbit hole, right? Now if we, yeah, yeah. we cage it... And they could, they could still like, try to try to smoke bang it through the, through the cage, because that's, that's usually a tell, right? If yeah. somebody uses a smoke or a cage, they try to cross. They could sway to the smoke or the or cage yeah. rather, or while you're crossing, the enemy, the jets who's here, could be like, oh, this cipher, he's helping me isolate this one run, I'm gonna take this one one with the omen. Mm -hmm. For example. So going down like a deeper rabbit hole about all these like mm -hmm. more and more possibilities to think about. And then if we think about like, okay, we want a cage, we want to get across, but we're worried about our omen possibly getting out to one one, then okay, then maybe instead of going across, we send inside this cage. And then we wait for Omen to make contact, say the jet peaks, then we push out of the cage yeah, and we tune it to 2v1, etc. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, yeah. So I guess the simplest and really very effective one is just, just take the passive angle together and just go back inside yeah. to the right. Have a wall here, wait for someone to come here, they fight the Omen. And then you're standing here along this container thing. You're standing here, waiting for Owen to make contact, then you swing out. Mm -hmm. As opposed to what actually happened was that you're already here, a little bit far away from cover. You take this 1v1, Owen is here, and not really able to see, like, say this person is not hugging the wall, but they're 
is standing further away. This jet is standing further away. And this omen now no longer has an angle to help you. He would have to move leftward to help you, which also puts him in range of someone on top of sight. Mm -hmm. I guess the big kind of mistake there, part of it was not only decision making, but uh, the perception. Because I, I kind of just almost assumed <clears throat> that this jet wouldn't know where I was and would, would try to wide swing this omen. So in my mind, it's like, Omen, I have her left, I'm watching the, the left swing, and I, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, this is a free pick. Even if she For doesn't know where you are, like, mm -hmm. you should just assume that your t the enemy is going to play correctly in like, isolated angles. Like, they're going to... Isolate yeah, angles, yeah, She's okay. not going to wide swing unless she really has a good read. Gotcha, gotcha. Only thing I want to bring up, too, is that one thing I like to do almost all the time is I like to take advantage of like, this box here, and I like mm -hmm. to get on top of this box, and then get on top of this container. And mm -hmm. that gives me more of an off angle. If I stand here, then I can I can still like, well, I can like stand here and then swing toward the edge of the container and accomplish the same thing where uh, like a jet's right. here, she fights the omen, and I swing and then I can like get an off angle plus like trade out my omen. Right, right. So I always like to abuse this whenever possible. It does put you at risk, like if someone's at snowman or further snowman, whatever, you do have to be careful that even if there's a, a wall here, the sage wall, that doesn't necessarily block mm. off snowman. Oh, gotcha. Hmm. But yeah, you just have to, to take advantage of what. Just make sure you have control of your peaks. Don't peek too far. Don't peek too wide. Make sure you know what you're peeking into. Mm. Okay, just doing it as, as options. Let's go back to the video. <clears throat> we can skip ahead uh, quite a bit if you want to. Yeah. Do you want to see the eco round? I mean, it's it's really up to you because I don't want to like you know take too much time, and I'm getting a lot of value already. Like, okay. just learning. So. <laughs> oh God. One thing I would, I would just say for, for Eco, again, you want to be taking risks. You don't necessarily want to be like 5 stacking, which is like a more, much more safe you play. Mm -hmm. And one thing you could do is that you can just you like... You think 5 stacking is, is safer? It's safer, yeah. Safer than like, say if you have someone lurking. Someone, someone puts some lurking, Oh, right? like a lurk? Okay. So why is lurking... You, don't wanna, you wouldn't want to like default on like a Eco though, right? Because you can't... It's it's harder to trade in a, in a default. Well, you don't. It's not necessarily about defaulting. It's more so that uh -huh. you let's say you let's say that for example you go walk up B. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. all four of your teammates they make a bunch of noise A, whatever. They make contact with people, get into a gunfight, whatever. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. So let's uh, let's go to map. So look like, again, like think about like the whole map, the whole bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have like four people going A. Let's say you're Cypher, you walk up garage, and then you hear someone who was originally like, they were, for whatever reason, they're, they're playing close. Let's say this jet is playing close, and then you mm -hmm. hear her running away towards sight, right? So she's like rotating, making a very obvious rotation. Then you as Cypher can be like, oh, okay, I can just like, let me just like slowly walk into B, get into B, and then from there, you can be like, hey guys, I have B sight. Rotate out of A, let's go B, at B. Mm -hmm. Follow up to that is you can say, hey guys, play really slow at A, like cut noise. I'm going to push to B, get to kitchen, and then like get a flank on someone on screens. Or get a flank mm -hmm. on someone at rafters, like CT spawn rafters or CT spawn, whatever they may be, right? Get like this huge flank off. And then we go B yeah. or something like that, whatever, right? Right, 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 right. right. Gotcha. But like these are like the types of like, risk and plays that you want to like look to make on eco rounds like look to make a, mm -hmm. a risky play that can pay off where you your team can like plant a bomb maybe you could possibly win the round although it's unlikely or like at least like you you'd be good to like kill someone like say someone was like um someone's playing kitchen for some reason or someone's playing boiler and then you you flank them from kitchen or you flank them from here and then you take their gun right that'd be like a huge value play gotcha and like yeah, like so much, so many things can can be can be accomplished from looking. Like maybe 
you get to here, you, you manage to like get this kill on the boiler, you you take their gun, then you fall back, you fall back to like underneath two, but while you're falling back, you put a trip here. And while you fall back, you put like uh, a trip here, for example, and then you play off your trip, or you put a trip inside kitchen, or maybe not, not that type of trip, and you put a trip like this, mm -hmm. or you put a trip on like HUD. Then like, you tell your team, hey, we'll take plant B, meanwhile you're still playing, I don't know, underneath two, or you're playing inside kitchen, or you're playing like on this corner, waiting for this this hot trip, or even right. like the the railing where they, they come up these stairs, put a trip there instead of like inside hut. Your team goes plant B. The three or four people on on site A would be like, oh, it's no longer A hit. Let's, let me rotate to B because they're planning B. Oh, I do all this trip here. I do all this trip here, right? Now you can convert that initial flank into not just one kill plus a gun, but now multiple kills plus guns. Gotcha. And it would be strong to do this as a sentinel, just because if I can get free <laughs> map control, then I'm the one that's best suited to also hold it in yeah. or, or get information through my cam. Yeah, that is a good point. Then you can, you can put a cam inside uh, CD spawn, and I'll put a cam like on this side of boiler. So maybe you don't even have a trip on, on mid. Maybe you just like place the cam here so yeah. that it looks this way. And possibly right. you can also look right side if you need need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Wow. So think about the bigger picture. Think about the entire map. Don't just think mm -hmm. that, oh, I need to five stack everywhere, every round. Look to take mm -hmm. risks whenever you're on eco round or whenever you're at a disadvantage to try to like mm -hmm. get an advantage. I'm also wondering about like a rifle or buy round lurk and, and when that would be considered effective versus not effective. That's another kind of thing I've been wondering about when I should be lurking on like a buy round. It will still be effective, but it will be high risk mm -hmm. because like if lurk mm -hmm. fails, then not only do like you lose your life, but you lose your gun, you lose your loadout, you lose your util, but let's say it's like a flank watch, out, yeah. Right? lose your flank watch but if your team's like playing default then like now your team has to like worry about flanks or let's say your team is uh uh for me executing a and then you you look and you die with your gun now mm -hmm. no one's there to watch mid like you, you originally had like a trip on mid or a trip on b you gotta trip right. like this or trip like this whoops but you do have a higher chance of your lurk being successful, right? With the yeah. better gun. You that's another chance. Yeah. that's a plus. Another thing too is that on eco round, generally your your lurks will be faster because you have a specter or you have a ghost or you have some pistol. Uh-huh. And you move faster with a pistol compared to a rifle. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Okay, that's interesting to think about. Alright. Okay. So let's see how we play this map. Uh, yeah, watch out for yep. nice. Unfortunately. Cage is kind of late. It makes mm. sense that you want to cage this. The problem is that your omen is already peaked. Yeah, right side. It, it should be for omen, yeah. So you should have caged much earlier. Okay. Okay, not a big deal. Eco round. Okay, man. Cage triggered. Oh, I like it. I like that a lot. Man. Assuming there's no game. Uh, the mind game. Yeah, yeah, the mind game. Cause now, if if I was enemy, I'm playing mid. I see this cage. I have to think. Oh, this one to be could be a two. Like who knows? Get the up off ACP. I can res. How I get up there? Uh, fuck, didn't know uh, why I'm wasting so much time camming there. Yeah, too much time, much, yeah, too much time like, camming, like... Oh my god. Can you look at your, your, the binding language of your rays. She's like holding W, doing a double satchel jump, <laughs> and we're too busy camming. Uh, so she finds herself in a oh, gunfight while we're still so camming. This cam is so like, useless. One on top. There's three here, three here, four here, four here, run, run. Oh, you should've ran. <laughs> There's three here, three here.
He says three here, three here, four here, four here, all four. And yeah, four, then, here, four Then you push further four to here, yellow. Four, now four, like you're you're dead. Last <laughs> Couldn't get out. If you backed out, the round actually could have been very winnable because like your sage could have rezzed, she could have ran toward A. You could have yeah. just like baited baited them to stay B, like stay toward green and then use like um like Jiggle Peak or something, bait some shots, whatever. Bait more attention, bait them to stay B while you your sage gets the vest off, while your sage runs to A to gets a bomb plant. On top of that, I guess another thing I hadn't thought of was if I made the little cage thing uh, in the beginning uh, with the mind game, and then I show myself, then they no longer have to worry about me. It was not so specifically about you, because like you could be caging for someone else to walk up in. So even if they oh, see actually, you, it's, it's not that's again. True. That's true. 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 Well, I mean, in the case of two people being alive, I guess. Another thing too is that uh, uh, these types of mind games are typically better when your team is playing a little bit slow. If your team's slower, like, yeah, hundred percent. If your team's like hard executing, then the the mind games gets less vibe because the, the enemy team is like less likely to think that there's a flanker because that the flanker would take too long while this execute is happening. Right, but, and by the time the the flanker is there, it's kind of like. Yeah. Too late anyway, and they can just turn around and watch it then. Yeah, but it's not necessarily on you. It's just kind of just like your team just decides to execute fast. And even if they are executing fast, I still like the idea that uh, you're you're caging to 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 mind game. Definitely, I mean, like, Cypher and Sentinels on on attack in general is just stronger if on a slower team, right? That's like more default heavy. Yeah, I would say so. But I think yeah. uh, even if your team is playing fast, like Cypher can get good value just by like having trips active to watch flanks. Meanwhile, he can focus focus solely on like helping his team push in, help focus mm -hmm. on trading, as opposed to doing other things. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, the main thing here, we can go forward, I think. It's three here, three yeah, here. main thing here is we're just kind of playing here. too slow while our team's playing aggressive, and then suddenly we're playing aggressive while our sage is falling back. Run, run. And yeah. we're, playing, we're going further into sight into one before, but we should be backing out. Careful on top, she likes to play there. Oh my god, my god. Look at these cages. <laughs> Don't pick too far. She take Sage's gun actually. Yeah. She likes to play there. Because Sage has some sort of rifle. Oh my I think. god. Oh no, she's a spectre. Never mind. I lied. Spectre? I think she's a spectre. I lied. One on top. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I uh, that. It would have been. It actually could have worked out if that jet wasn't there. I think. I, I think maybe it would have been like, good for two. I feel like. Oh my god, my cage. Instead of like trying to cage right side, because your team for like at least two, three rounds already, that yeah. they just like W key, right? And not well, only did they W key, but there. like the stage is W keying, they. Peak right side, and the enemy team has not played anyone right side for m multiple rounds now. So instead of like cage right for someone who hasn't been there, oh my God, my instead of imagine if we had these cages available for pushing left, mm -hmm. like maybe we cage here, right here, yeah. Like we cage. Well, actually, we don't need to cage screens, but like because it's already. I mean, without knowing that the omen smoke was gonna be there, yeah, I I could have yeah. caged it. You can yeah. like cage this area so you can get closer for shotty. Yeah, but yeah, if you were to do that, I'll probably drop bombs so you don't like risk losing bomb deeper into screens. Mm, 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 mm. But yeah, that would be like a super high value, high reward, but also super high risky play. Uh, have you seen uh, Dasnerf or or heard of him? Nope. Uh, he's the the cipher main radiant cipher main that used to mm -hmm. play controller only and and judge only and cipher only. Yeah. Yeah, so I was trying to like get get a few plays off of him and 
one of the things he did was like always buy two cages, push with the cages with yep. the, with the judge. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely something you could do here. Like, imagine if you cage the cross or abuse this mm. this omen smoke, just stand inside the smoke, and then like now you almost like completely shut down screens unless they 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 sway you through the smoke. Yeah. Because, like, there's no way for them to like push through without dealing with your judge. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's actually what I'll be looking to do actually instead of like going right side. Because going right side is, is like too many mid to longer range angles to do with that your judge is not good at. Instead I will be looking to get inside the smoke ACP. Gotcha. One on top. Uh. Get out of my way. And maybe if you did that, you possibly could have avoided the jet. One on top. Uh, okay. Fair, fair. Let's get that raise ult out. Uh, Sage, stay alive. Okay. Cage triggered. <laughs> They're just gonna shoot that cam. Just like that. At least you get the tag off. That's good. Oh, I can help you win it. Fucking sitting under tube. Taken out. As soon as you see this wall, just think that. Tube is no longer an option. <laughs> Unless you have Odin, you can like spray through all this. Like this is no longer an option. Now the next option is the help yeah. arena. Mm. Fucking sitting under tube. Don't activate it yet. Don't activate it yet. Uh, should have waited till the you slow went away. Yeah. Yeah. Let's kill. The Omen's kind of being boiler, you. Boiler, two boilers. Two boilers. Two boilers. One on top. I'm watching your top. Oh, huge. Ooh. Last one B, last one B. I can't, I can't get out. Yes, you can. You can just run, run to today. I might give you info. Behind no, because I heard the guy. Oh. I I heard um, Sky. That's the problem. But I could have just like ran away. Yeah, ran up too. You could have just run away. You could just immediately yeah. run, run to it, went today. As soon as you get this kill. Or if you choose to stick around, choose, stick, stick around is not a bad idea. But I would put a trip in front of you. So, one, 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 on me, okay. two boilers, gotcha. two one on top. I'm watching it. But wouldn't this guy be holding me from under two? Uh, what do you mean? The the guy that killed okay. Omen. One more boiler. Two if boiler. I try to go back A, I'm watching it. I have to cross the top. the the angle that Sky is holding from under two. So you so you then you, you don't go to it. No, you don't pass mid, right? So let me go to the map or just screen in general. So this Omen dies here. So that uh -huh. means that she has an angle like this, right? Mm -hmm. And then we kill the Sova, we kill whoever else is that Sage. But right. if we choose to go A, we won't cross through here. Right, you would help you would would, go around. We would go to a T spawn. But the sky would have the angle on me, I'm assuming, because she would she heard me kill two people mm -hmm. with Guardian. She knows I'm by there, she knows uh, there's a wall in vents, she knows yep. that I I'm not gonna cross front, so I'm gonna be going back A. Yeah. And she'll be able to hold me yeah. from so, from under and still. So. Then yeah, your yeah, other option is to stay here and play off a trip. So mm -hmm. you can put a trip like this. Like that, okay. Yeah, so yep. then yep. she she really insists on pushing you. She has to deal with the trip. You can pick off the trip, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, trip I think trip here would have been pretty big too. Yeah. So yeah, mm. those are the two things that we would go for. Yeah. But already I kind of panicked after the kill. Yeah. Yeah. Already you got like two three kills. So like your value is already already there. Last one B. Last one B. I can't. I can't get out. And then the a wall breaks, and then I, I realize. Yeah. So now, if yeah. you had that trip, now you you could choose to play off the trip, or you can choose just to or, or run to, away. Yeah, to run away. To... Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> So you had to check, you had more options. So what I mean? This is a nice spot. <laughs> I would probably not put trips for flank anymore, or maybe a cam is fine, but because mm -hmm. like this entire game, the enemy team has not flanked at all. Mm. You've never caught anyone with your chips before. Okay. Well, now somebody decides to push B. As I say that. Well, you just killed the B player, so it's like, why even put a chip there? Why, why am I tripping? Yeah. Unless you have like a really hard read that it's more people that's gonna push B. 
spike carrier is killed. Wait for me, give me a little time. One A. One back side. Give me a little time. One A. Last player standing. Two A, last two A. I'll flash you and your team, just Where hard execute so while you're going to flank. A. The flank is a good idea, just that it needs to be coordinated, coordinated and communicated with your team. And sometimes yeah. your team just doesn't want to listen. Ah, oh, GG. Winnable. So, let me ask, pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I isolate a kill as soon as possible. Um, I think at this point, they know where they last saw me, so they're fully open to the possibility. Um, and then as soon as I get a kill, I ult <clears throat> for the last one and just take that fight. Okay, what else? Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it, but I mean, af I guess sort of... <clears throat> This is all hindsight, but I could even jiggle the cam a little bit to see if one's pushing me, maybe. Okay. Um, I definitely have util, especially the cage that I could use. But it would I would only probably use it after the first kill because yep. I, it would give me a way. So yeah, as soon as I get my first kill, I alt for info and then trip and cage accordingly for You've got mail. The last one, but I mean, they know they have bomb there, so if they're smart, they would just be holding me instead of trying to push. Yeah. Um, so at this point, I have to clear like every angle, yep. try to do it as fast as possible before they start suspecting the flank. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So definitely, like, 1v2 is definitely winnable, and the way that you win it is by isolating angles, like isolating 1v1s, where if you mm -hmm. take a 1v1 with the Sova, kill the Sova. Now you just need to take another one with the sage and you win. Like that's totally winnable. Mm -hmm. If you think of like every every gunfight as a 50-50, and mm -hmm. actually you have a slight advantage because you know that both enemies are A, but they don't know that you're coming from screens. Mm -hmm. So, the, so you have the like sort of like the element of surprise. You might be able to catch someone like off guard. Yep. <laughs> And you have the right idea that uh, you don't want to like spend your utility like immediately because that would give you your position. So probably look to spend your utility like a cage or even trip whatever after the initial kill after your position is given given away. Yep. Okay. And uh, let's see. Go back to am I looking at VLC? VLC. And I'll be looking for body language on the new team like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he act that's actually pretty big because he just kind of re um, I don't know where that recon is, but he's kind of checking this, and I think for the few seconds that he reconned a after the few seconds, like I actually have a little bit more advantage because he's kind of thinking, oh, I recon there, no one's there. Yeah. So I could actually maybe even try and push uh, push a little bit faster, but it's it's a risk. So, so is that what you mean by body language, the recon? Well, there's two things of piece, two pieces of information that I'm getting from this, and let me the turn up the volume. Uh huh. So that bounces uh, two times, I think, at least one or two times, and then based on the footsteps and where the, the arrow landed. So I can't even that pinpoint that, that footstep. He's standing somewhere here. Okay. Based on that's like, the Sova. Yeah, the Sova. He bounced it like oh. this, and I'll bounce one or two times, and landed here. Oh fuck! I didn't even notice that the so, bounce. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe he's standing like here, and he shot like this, maybe like this or something like that. Mm -hmm. But he's like in this box, this general area. The second piece of information that this thing tells us is that this it's very unlikely that anybody is on site A. Why? Because he darted A. If someone was on site A already, then why is he darting this area? He would dart somewhere that there's nobody there, right? To to get information. For, yeah, I guess if they're smart, yeah, why would they dart something they already have info on? Yeah, right. So yeah, unless, yeah, yeah. Like, unless this dart is a bait, it's it's likely that nobody is is, is on site A. Instead, we know for sure Sova is somewhere in this box, and then probably Sage is either like with him, maybe she's belt or something like that. Yeah. I guess unless they're like 200 IQ and they like bait the, the using the dart. 
and yeah, someone's maybe. actually holding close. That's that's like a very rare chance. Maybe like maybe like Sage is like holding here. Yeah, then, like there or maze or something like that. And then for whatever reason, he dies here, which is not gonna get any information, any new information that Sage doesn't already get. Yeah, maybe. It's just unlikely. Yeah. Okay. They would only do that if, if they knew I was screens and were trying to vape me. Yeah, but if that and were the case, then he would just like, right. he would like dart above you, or maybe he would just like run over immediately and set up a crossfire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's see how this plays out. I think we're too worried about this dart. We can already start clearing to the left of the screens. Actually, I'm clueless where that dart is, like where that landed. <laughs> just look at, the, look at the minimap. It, it landed on, on site, like, on the wall. Yeah. Right. Like, so we right can next to headshot box, yeah, I think. We can yeah. use the screen's sign to block off, like, that, the block off mm -hmm. the dart. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we're still clearing on clear rafters, we'll clear got to the left, which we didn't look at. I didn't clear, yeah. Oh, god. So yeah, as I predicted, nobody's on site, that's why he darted this. I didn't clear uh, hell, even yeah. though. Uh... <sighs> I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh... I mean, besides the like, you just lost a gunfight, but like try to think about these these tiny details that give away information, right? Because like, do, uh, do you use uh, HRTF by the way? Do you, do you recommend it? I use it. I don't know if there's a huge difference or not. Okay. I just assume it is because I saw some video and I'm like, oh, okay, let's turn it on. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, yeah. As I predicted, like nobody's on a site. That's why he darted. Mm. And Silva so, uh, is exactly in that box because that's where I heard the footstep and that's where I heard the dart come from. Hmm. And mm -hmm. and Sage is, is like nowhere here. Sage is probably either belt or like on, on top of bomb or something or somewhere near the sofa. So mm -hmm. knowing those two things, you probably could have even considered just like. Skipping clearing the site because you're you're tight on time so so to speak, you only have mm -hmm. uh, like forty five seconds once you start entering, that you want to try to like have as much time as possible after you get that that first kill maybe have more time to get bomb or make a home play or something like that. Right, because it looks like the bombs on top of belt, which means I have to loop right. all the way around as well, right, not exactly. just kill with sage. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's even that. even more point that you you try to make this play as fast as possible because even oh, if you kill the silver. It's possible that the sages be like, well, I'm not gonna fight this one we want. I can just run away. I'm gonna run to a T spawn and just like waste time. But it's less likely for her to do that if you're if there's still like another thirty seconds on the clock. Mm -hmm. But she'll definitely do that if there's like only ten seconds left on the clock. So much to think about here. So besides the fact that you lost the one run, it's unfortunate. Shit happens. It all comes down to mechanics. But just like things you can do to make these types of clutches and plays a little bit more successful. Favorable, yeah. Hmm. Okay, any questions so far? No, um, I think a, a lot of it kind of comes down to decision-making and just kind of considering possibilities, <clears throat> um, yeah. being aware of, of information, I think yeah. was big. Uh, one problem that I do consistently have is missing out on these little pieces of information, especially in like the heat of the moment. Um, and I mean, I guess the, 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 the most obvious answer is just play more, but I'm wondering if there's a way to kind of work on that specifically, because sometimes I grind for like hours and hours, like on, on some days I would do like 12 plus hours and it's just, it doesn't always translate yeah. into gains in terms of skill. I'd say focus on quality over quantity. Instead of like grinding 10, 12 hours per day, instead play like two to three hours maximum. But mm. each time that you play, have some specific goal in mind that you want to work on. Whether it's like, oh, I want to play more aggressive this game and work on my aggression or work on contesting um, mid, for example, on the sand or, or gaining map control for my team. Like focus on gaining mm. map control for my team. Ask yourself every single round, how much map did I contest? How much map control did I gain for my team? And what could I have done better to get more and more map control for my team? Regardless mm -hmm. if I kill someone or don't kill someone, or if I lose this gunfight, whatever, what more yeah. KDA is, that's not really important. Instead, it's just like these individual goals that you want to accomplish. 
right or, or even like these habits that you want to accomplish or like i don't know, every time that you cam you make sure that you're still moving you jump while you're camming or something i don't know mm -hmm. does that uh would you say that also applies to trying to get better at processing more information and, and um, not missing anything yeah that's a good question and as is that to, something you can kind of focus on to to hone further you think um, like uh so it's two things one is the processing information and the second is after you process it what decision what with yeah what, what you do with it right what you decide to do what play you decide to make mm -hmm. and for that second bullet point that's where like wide views comes into play where like either you yeah. or a coach would sit down and watch one of your previous games and ask yourself like was this the best play or did i have other options or was there a better option that i could have gone with and then as you, you do that you you go through like a laundry list of like all the trade-offs like okay we have five different options this has pros and cons this has pros and cons this also has pros and cons etc well, this this option is similar to this other option but it's safer but oh this thing watches this thing whatever mm. etc so that's that's the second part that's, that's the second part yeah well, the first part for um maximizing your awareness a lot of it is really just like looking at your minimap because the minimap gives you so much information whether it's mm. what uh, you happen to see on like the corner of your screen or what, if it's what your team sees so you see where your team is positioned you see what your team is looking at like through the vision cones mm -hmm. and you also see um the enemy if the enemy shows up on silver screen it's going to show up on your minimap if the the rain at those a flash your team sees it it's going to show up on your minimap with the silver darts like, actually there's like the silver darted here and even though you don't even see the dart it shows up on your minimap so there's some things that even if you don't see it it'll show up on your minimap right right that's actually interesting yeah yeah um so like i guess how often are you kind of flicking back and forth between you and the minimap because sometimes i get worried about yeah. I don't know, just, you know, like, somebody could peek me and I'm just, sometimes I have to, like, purposely take cover just to check the minimap. So I'm, I'm not the, always noticing it in the heat of the moment. I check the minimap as often as I can when it's safe to do so. So there's some cases where, like, mm, let's say wait. we're here. <laughs> and, like, wait for me, me. we're clearing this. We, between, we switch between looking across here, clearing an angle, and looking at the minimap. In this very gotcha. brief moment, we're somewhat clearing an angle, you know, we're kind of wide swinging, we're across here, it's like in the middle of nowhere. But okay, we clear the angle, now we go back, look at the minimap. Look at the minimap, look at the minimap, look at the minimap. Until we get to this next corner, and we think, okay, we're going to clear the next corner, or we'll clear the next area, or whatever. Now we look mm -hmm. at our, back at our cross here. Look back at our cross here. Then like we, right about here. Yeah, right about here. Then we peek. Now we'll focus solely on our cross here. Solely on our cross here. Solely oh, on our cross I... here. Okay, this this VLC is kind of... Wait for me. Give me a little more. <laughs> looking at the cross here. Looking at cross here. Looking at cross here. Hopefully you look to your left. Presumably you yep. look to your left. As soon as this whole area is clear, look back at the minimap. See, okay, what just happened? Okay, we see Jet. Jet died. Omen's going in, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. You collect that information. Like, collect that information, okay. collect that information, and then, okay, and then we decide we're going to knife out, and then we okay. go back to, okay, back to clearing angles, clearing angles. But so, are you, you're not really lingering, right? You're just taking like a snapshot and, and going back to yeah. to the crosshair as switching, quickly switching, as possible. Switching back and forth when it's safe to do so. If you're, right. you're clearing the angle, then okay, focus on your crosshair. If you're holding the angle, focus on your crosshair. If mm -hmm. you're able to go behind cover, then that gives you a couple of seconds to look in the minimap because hmm. you don't always have to like stand in some spot let's say like um say you're standing here right holding an angle then okay fine look at your cross here but you could go behind cover like this imagine if you don't take this imagine it's no the sky doesn't push up mm -hmm. then you can like while you're protected from the, the speed push you can look at your minimap see what's going on and then you go right. back then you go back, you peek this again. Go back to holding this angle. Some people tell me they can just see everything through their peripheral vision. I'm wondering if that's actually even true. 
Uh, yeah, you could. Um, I'd say it'd be kind of hard to do so. It's easily just mm. to just to switch between both of them. Gotcha. Well, other times maybe you just maybe you just commit to only angle. You, you don't go behind cover. But kind of like, like say just holding single whatever, and then while you're holding it, maybe just just take a really quick glance at the min map. Gotcha. It just depends like how fast you're able to process it. So that's another thing is like being able to snap to the minimap, take a snapshot and just kind of like take everything in yep. and then go yep. back. Like I think vision is kind of, physical vision is important yep. uh, as, as far as this goes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions so far? No, no, that's, <clears throat> that's it. Like everything's very clear. I have the notes and I have the recordings. So I can go back to it at any point. Okay, so let's look at these notes that we took. Yeah. Major, can you see the screen, by the way? Mm hmm Okay, so the first bullet point is look to play aggressive or take risks on eco rounds. Think that uh, you're not really going to be able to hold angles or hold sights with just a pistol or a specter against rifles. Instead, you should look to play aggressive, take risks, and make a play. Where it's like you gain map control, you gain information, you deny information, you gain mm -hmm. access to bomb site B while your your team like make noise at A, etc. Like plays like that, right? Look to make those types of plays or risks on eco rounds instead of playing normally. Gotcha. And this leads into the second bullet point. Look to gain value through risks by gaining map control, gaining information, possibly denying any information. And then this skipping bullet point three for a second. This leads into uh, bullet point number four, where like if you were to take map control, especially when it's free and safe to do so, you should basically always do it because gaining map control gives your team more options. More angles, your and, and also frees up resources. So, for example, you you push to A, for example, in defense, and you push all the way up. You could go T spawn. You have the option of going T spawn. You can have the option of going T spawn to B. You can have the option of going T spawn to mid. You have the option of just staying um, like close between um, A site and and T spawn and get like some off angle, right? Mm -hmm. Those are things that you want to try to accomplish, and those things are really good for your team. Like it frees up resources. You can tell you your other player who's also at pawn side, hey, go rotate, rotate early because I'm just going to push mm. up A and then like hard hold it from like some close angle with like, I don't know, a, sh a shorty or shotgun or whatever, or whatever, whatever I have. And by getting your team more options, like you, like, yeah, you have the option of like flanking, for example, you have more angles, you can, you have the angle from T-spawn, for example, which is much uh, less expected than, uh, than one of your teammates, like pushing from mid, for example, going from mid to T-spawn. Gotcha. Okay. And at the same, same time, it denies enemy team options and angles. Like now, in order for the enemy team to go A, they have to run into your your like your close range specter or judge or whatever, or they have to run into you holding some random angle in T spawn. Mm -hmm. Right now, it becomes like really difficult. But like most likely, you're gonna kill at least one person because like it's it's like ten ten thousand angles to check when you're going back to T spawn, returning to T spawn. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Um, so yeah, most of it... Uh, oh, actually, I skipped bullet point three. So bullet point three, try to have a more global presence. This all kind of ties in together. Like most of it is just really thinking about like the bigger picture. Don't just think that, oh, I'm playing Cypher, I'm playing Bombsite A, I'm going to play Bombsite A for the entire match. Think that there's an entire map to work with. Sometimes I'll go B, sometimes I'll go A, sometimes I go mid, sometimes I'll go mid and put chips at A. Sometimes I'll go A, I'll put chips in mid, or I'll put chips at B. Put chips where you expect the enemy team to be, or put chips where you want to um, not have to worry about a flank, for example, while you play aggressive somewhere else, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So try to focus on the bigger picture. Try to have a more global presence. Make the enemy team respect the cipher utility everywhere they go, not just bombs at A, but if they decide to go mid, make them think, oh, there could be a trip mid, there could be a trip two, it could be anywhere, right? Make make them gotcha. think that if I go B, oh, there could be a trip at yellow, there could be a trip on site, like so much so much crap to deal with, right? Regardless if if they're where where were they going, make them think that a trip could be anywhere. Makes sense. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So those are the major things. Uh, the minor minor details. Try to press tab more often to get information. So what your team buys, what the enemy team. Or what your team buys or doesn't buy, like if your team doesn't have some piece of crucial utility, or if you, 
most commonly, like you find out the enemy team is like on an eco run, right? Then those types of details, those types of information should dictate how you play this round. Whether it's you decide to play more aggressive or you decide to play more passive. Mm -hmm. Set it as an example. So definitely press tab more. Tab gives you information just like the minimap does. Second bullet point, try to use cages on retakes or even just cages in general to help isolate angles. There's Sometimes you do it correctly, like you, you cage mid so you can get to tube, for example. And then sometimes you, you cage to the right side of bombsite A so you can go left, go toward maze. But um, there's some times where you just kind of cage randomly because you just, you just throw it and then it goes to waste. And sometimes mm. it's because that you happen to press it by accident. Sometimes it's because you, you're thinking this is a good cage, but it ends up going to waste. Mm. But Got it. always try to think like cages are really strong to help isolate angles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the bullet points, try to be faster setting up, especially in defense. You spend a lot of time like thinking about like where do I want to put my trap, where do I want to put my cage, where do I want to put my cam. And then the round's mm -hmm. already started, we're still placing util. That could have been placed a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then like gunfights happen, like Amanda gets to a gunfight, she managed to win it, which is great, but it would have been a lot easier if you were there to help her. Instead of like still setting up a cam like on top of a... Uh, on top of... Uh, Yo, screens. Yo, yeah. So yeah, try to be faster setting up. Try to have like some mental setup plan about like planning out in your head already. Oh, I, I want to put a chip here, cage here, whatever, whatever. Have that all be ready to go. And then last bullet points, really minor is that when it's last line, you should fall by, fall which by. means like yeah, upgrade your pistol. Not a huge deal for now, but maybe in the future. Yeah, sometimes I don't even notice that it's it's the last round, even though it literally tells you in, in, in the big announcer voice and it's in the middle of your screen. Um, probably something to do with attention or <clears throat> me being overwhelmed with information. Yeah. But so yeah. Overall, I think like uh, your, your aim is not bad. Like your 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 game sense is not bad. Your micro play is pretty good. It's more so that you need to think more about the bigger picture about. Not just about you and yourself and the enemy team, but well, the person that you're fighting. But think mm -hmm. about the entire map. Think about all of your teammates, all the angles, all the positions, all the things, all the time. Gotcha. All right. Um, I do have my like round by round notes, but would you be able to just kind of yeah. copy paste this into the message yeah. or something? Yeah, that'd be helpful. Okay, then. All right. Thank you. Right, cool. Thank yeah. you so much for your time, man. I mean, that's this has been amazing. Yeah, so. no problem. If you have uh, any questions or want to do more values in the future, just let me know. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, thank you so much. I'll I'll uh, talk to you later. I'll definitely like try to implement these and let you know how they go too. All right, for sure. All right. All right, man. Have a good night. Yeah, thanks. You too. Bye. All right. Bye, Mingo.